is tennis good morning welcome to this Australian Open life and it is qualifying day two US Open 2023 and today we're focusing on the WTA tour we are following live matches in New York Flushing Meadows uh, where it's currently uh, a sunny 25 degrees at 534 in the afternoon in New York uh, don't go away, we'll be right back. It's qualifying day two at uh, Flushing Meadows in New York. We're coming to you live from Melbourne, Australia. We are the only independent media platform covering qualifying online uh, on your iPhone, your iPad. I don't know what you're listening to us or watching uh, watching on, but it doesn't matter. You're here, you made it. Fantastic. So we're not going to muck around. We're going straight to court five at Flushing Meadow where Jamie Fawless, the Australian uh, she is currently taking on, uh, now <laughs> I can't make this screen uh, large for you, but it is <laughs> Zvron, <laughs> Zvron Raver of Russia. You won't see a flag uh, popping up there on the, uh, on the screen there. The players are warming up. We're going to follow the first set of this match live to the end of the first set on this match. It's court 16, actually. Um, and uh, we'll be uh, keeping it uh, in, uh, visually engaging for you. Uh, if you're interested, uh, you want to see things going on in the background, um, we'll uh, swap over to some uh, news bites. Uh, admittedly, they're a, they're a little bit out of date, but that's all right. Just give me an example of the type of content uh, we like to put up here at uh, this Australian Open life and uh, what you've got to look forward to um, for the Australian Open 2024. We launched and released our um, 2024 teaser yesterday after our day one coverage. What a day yesterday. I'm still getting over that match between uh, the Brazilian and the Frenchman, that young, that young Frenchman from Lyon in France. The 20 year old got up three tiebreakers in a row uh, each player winning uh, uh, a set on a tie break and the young Frenchman getting up uh, eventually in the third set tiebreaker. Just an amazing, amazing performance by that kid. Um, so we're just waiting for these players. Um, they're warming up uh, at the moment. Uh, Jamie Fawless, uh, no stranger to this Australian Open life. We've, we've profiled her in the past. In fact, we profiled Jamie Fawless um, in uh, 2021, was it 2021? <laughs> Time flies. My memory's not so good. But uh, let's just um, uh, get this screen up here for you. 
Um, this will be a little bit better. There you go. Now, frustratingly, <laughs> in this live stream uh, broadcast studio software dashboard, it won't let me uh, scroll down to uh, the stats there, but that's all right. Um, because we can see the score. And that match is now underway. It is uh, Zvrona Reva, uh, the Russian. Uh, she is uh, serving in the first game. She's won the first point, uh, serving at 90 miles per hour. Uh, Jamie Fawless receiving. We've profiled Jamie in the past um, at this Australian Open Life. She was a, she's often a wild card, but um, uh, has made first rounds of uh, uh, Grand Slams into the main draw through qualifying. Um, but uh, don't worry, we're not going to um, uh, do everything in a rush here as uh, Jamie Fawless uh, wins the first point of her first round qualifying singles match at uh, Flushing Meadows. Uh, that was a fairly uh, spanky served sent down by the Russian at 97 miles per hour um, as the music fades out. So. Let's just take a deep breath. <laughs> now, if you want to watch uh, this match between uh, these two players, uh, I'm gonna, I've am gonna. i already put in the chat, uh, for those of you playing along at home, uh, that uh, the, um, the chat has the link to uh, the browser, uh, the, uh, the tracker for this match. Um, if you wish to... Uh, 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 look, look along. Sorry, I'm just trying to. We all know that guys can't do two things at once, <laughs> and so just excuse my umming and ahhing. Um, there you go in the chat. Uh, you've got the link there to Zvrona <laughs> Rava versus Jamie Fawless of Australia. Um, and I uh, confess to a tiny little bit of bias as soon as I saw that Australian flag. Well, there was no need to look at all the other live scores. <laughs> in round one, uh, which kicked off yesterday. Uh, qualifying singles round one for men and women. Today we're focusing on um, on the women uh, entirely. Uh, we'll be going through for another, I don't know, two or three hours here, maybe even four, um, depending <laughs> depending on uh, how, uh, how things go. Um, but uh, thanks for joining us. Um, at this Australian Open Life, uh, we are the only independent media platform bringing live coverage of qualifying singles at uh, Flushing Meadows in New York. It's uh, about 5.41 in New York at the moment. It's a balmy 25 degrees. Oh boy, imagine sitting back in the stands on uh, Court 16 watching, uh, watching these two ladies go at it uh, on day two. The Russian, uh, she's not she's not powering through this game, it's got to be said. She's currently up 40-30. Um, and Jamie Fawless, uh, she's an experienced campaigner uh, now. And uh, during this match, during this set, we'll be following this set uh, for this match all the way through to the end of the first set. And, uh, and then we'll... Uh, the format for today, we're going to follow a live match, one set only. And then we'll take a break. And then we'll come back from that break. Well done, Jamie Fawless. Uh, she's up to juice. So uh, the Russian not getting off to the most quickest or confident of starts. Uh, three minutes into this match, she's serving consistently at around the... Ooh, there's a big 101 miles per hour. I was just about to say that she was sort of serving up fairly easy pancakes <laughs> for Jamie Fawless to swat back. And there's the points underway at Juice. Uh, I'd say there's a bit of a rally going on. And the Russians, Vrona Rava, uh, wins that point. She's gone to advantage. So an opportunity here still for uh, Jamie Fawless. Uh, now I'm looking at the uh, the live stream. I want to be looking at this. <laughs> I want to be looking at my browser. Not my live stream browser. And the Russian uh, wins that first game in... Uh, in Took her four minutes to, uh, to 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 wake up and get going. Jamie Fawless now on serve, and um, we'll be going through um, as I interrupted myself. That uh, once we uh, complete this first set with this particular match between uh, Zvonareva of Russia and Jamie Fawless of Australia, 
Uh, we'll take a break, then we'll come back and look at some completed matches and go through some results, and then we'll take another break, and then we'll come back and we'll find another match um, and uh, spend a set uh, giving you live coverage, audio-only radio-style coverage, because uh, Wise Words Media, we punch above our weight, but unfortunately we can't land any punches on the face, <laughs> the nose of uh, the broadcast rights. That was um, a very famous uh, saying, quote Mike Tyson. He said, every, every, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. So we haven't been able to punch in the face of uh, the rights holders for uh, uh, the US Open uh, broadcast footage, but that's all right. Audio style, audio only radio style coverage is our uh, niche. And uh, we've got plenty of viewers and listeners who uh, like it uh, exactly that way. So it was um, this game, uh, Jamie Fawless uh, winning the first point of the second game of uh, this particular qualifying match, round one. Uh, there's another two days. So that's uh, we'll be alternating today between a live, a live match, uh, giving coverage to one set only each live match taking a break, coming back, going through some completed matches, uh, updating you with some scores and results, and taking another break, go back to another live match, another break, more completed match results, another break, and if there's any live matches left, and if uh, <laughs> we've still got the energy uh, between uh, 11 a.m. local Melbourne time and uh, midday today, uh, that's as uh, we're going to uh, go the distance, hopefully, because uh, yesterday uh, that was some introduction to uh, the US Open 2023. We also covered a men's match, um, a set, the opening set between the Croatian, uh, Borna Gojo. Uh, he was playing the 20-year-old Serbian, Hamed Medjidovic, and uh, that match also went the distance uh, unexpectedly into a third set, the young Serbian um, uh, really, um, really um, showed some quality to uh, get the win in the second set, and he forced it to a third, and he uh, he lost that match, but he certainly would have won a lot of admirers. That would have given him a lot of confidence. Uh, the result, even though he lost the third set six four, he would have been um, really uh, pleased to get that match experience that grand slam experience even though it's qualifying get that under his belt as jamie fallis is now uh, uh 30 all in her first service game of the opening set of her uh women's qualifying singles the first round on court 16 against uh, the russian and um once uh once we get into a couple of games here as we go through this set um we'll give you some um We'll, we'll just uh, pull back the curtain on the careers of um, Zvona Reva. No stranger to any tennis fan. She's not playing under the Russian flag. Um, the condition of uh, the Russians and the Belarusians uh, competing in the Grand Slams this year, they're, they've been allowed back, um, provided they um, compete as neutrals. Um, that's a topic for another day, but we'll... Um, as uh, Jamie Fawless is suddenly facing a break point here. So um, the Russian uh, uh, getting into her work. So uh, both, you'd have to say, both starting off a little bit nervously. Um, Jamie Fawless serving at a pretty respectable 91 miles an hour. Um, we're in, just uh, still in the first 10 minutes of this match. Um, but we, we admit to bias. <laughs> Uh, as soon as I saw the Aussie flag, well, that was the match for us. So uh, hope you don't mind uh, for any of our non-Australian listeners. And Jamie Fawless has just dropped. She's been broken in her first service game of the first <laughs> set of her first round qualifying singles match in the women's WTA Tour side of the draw at Flushing Meadows. So um, <laughs> that's, that's put a bit, a bit of a dampener on things. Um, so let's uh, just swap over the background for you. As I said in the chat, uh, whether you're a member, a subscriber or not, uh, that link to this match is there if you'd like to open up the, uh, the uh, um, if you'd like it to open up the slam tracker. <laughs> oh dear, they're always coming up with uh, 
with cute little names for uh, little things uh, <coughs> on the marketing teams at these Grand Slams. So if you want to open up the Slam Tracker and follow the score live, especially uh, the stats, uh, they're live and dynamic and changing all the time, but uh, my broadcast studio software, um, I can't scroll down. So um, if you want to follow that, uh, you're welcome to click that link, but you're also more than welcome. Uh, I would love it. We would love it, Wise Words Media, if you would subscribe to uh, This Australian Open Life and uh, join the conversation. Don't just like what we're doing. Have a chat with us. Uh, let us know in the comments what you think um, about um, our content format, our presentation. And uh, we really want to know what your views of uh, the US Open are. And uh, if you've got any favourite players... Or you want to know a bit more about a certain player who's in qualifying, whether it's uh, on the men's side of the draw or the ladies' side of the draw, let us know because uh, that's our bread and butter here um, is uh, sharing and uh, un uh, sharing knowledge and uncovering stories um, uh, of, of different players and their careers. Uh, we tell stories and our story is tennis, of course. So let's take a quick break. Coming back, um, we'll update you on the score. Uh, which is currently 30 all in the third game of the first set uh, as Ron and Raver are serving. And uh, we're going to take a short break. So don't go away. We'll be right back. We tell stories, and our story is tennis. G'day, welcome to this Australian Open Life, uh, produced by Wise Words Media. We're based in Melbourne, Australia. We are the only independent media platform bringing you, bringing the world live coverage of uh, women's qualifying singles at the US Open, and uh, we're covering the first set live of uh, the match on Court 16. Jamie Fawless is fighting to break the serve of uh, uh, Zvonareva of Russia. Uh, the Russian has advantage and leading two love in the third game of the first set, serving uh, anywhere between 91, around about 90 miles per hour, and 101 was her fastest serve uh, in her previous service game. And uh, Jamie Fawless uh, had her serve broken uh, in her first service game. And uh, although the Russian was very shaky in uh, the opening service game of this first set, Jamie Fawless uh, has fallen behind pretty quick. So uh, the Russian, uh, well known to tennis fans around the world, she's uh, no slouch with the racket. Uh, she's currently ranked uh, 672 in the world, uh, which does not reflect her quality. Jamie Fawless, um, she's uh, ranked 187 in the world. She's well outside the top 100. Uh, which gets you into the main draw of any Grand Slam around the world. And uh, and she's um, really experienced now, Jamie Fawless. Uh, she's uh, in her uh, mid-20s, uh, early mid-20s, I think, at the moment, uh, around about the age of 22, 23. And uh, she's fighting to stay in this uh, uh, third uh, game of the first set, looking to uh, break the uh, the Russian serve. So we'll just stick with this. And she's uh, she's got got that game, uh, the Russian. She has jumped out 
after 13 minutes, she leads three love, um, and uh, Jamie Fawless has to, um, um, uh, she just has to win this service game, basically. So we'll be following this match um, all the way through to uh, the end of the first set, and um, and then we'll take a break. Um, we will um, uh, then come back with some completed scores. And for those of you that like to be visually engaged, um, we will just uh, just go to our um, archive of um, news bites here. Um, yep, yeah, fair enough. Uh, they're a little bit out of date, but uh, for those of you that like to be visually engaged, um, that'll be there for you in the background. Now, for those of you that um, want to follow the slam tracker of the match between uh, Zvonna Raber and Jamie Fawless. It's there for you in the chat. Just click on the link. You don't have to be a subscriber, but you only have to be a subscriber for 60 seconds if you want to, um, uh, if you want to join the conversation. And uh, why not even start a conversation, <coughs> please? Um, because there's nothing worse than me just banging on, <laughs> talking to myself. But I'm really broadcasting uh, to the world. Uh, we are the only independent media platform um, uh, covering these uh, qualifying rounds live online and uh, dedicated coverage um, across a few different live matches and uh, we'll update you with completed scores so far. So Jamie Fawless, um, not going that well at the moment, it must be said. Um, she's 15-all uh, in her second service game, trailing three love. And um, so let's just go um, and do a little bit of a, a look into the, um, uh, into the career profiles of uh, Zrona Raver and uh, Jamie Fawless. And let's just see how they got here today uh, to be even um, eligible to compete um, in the, uh, the women's qualifying rounds of uh, the US Open. And uh, we'll start off with the Russian because I uh, don't want to be accused of... Uh, <laughs> being overly biased, but uh, we'll just take a look into um, into their uh, 2023 um, so far. Um, but might start off with a bio for each player, just to bring you up to speed on um, uh, you know um, on their background and where they're from. So uh, Zvonna Raver, she has been around. For quite some time, and I did not realise that she was 38 years of age and uh, plays right-handed. Um, no notes about her backhand, so um, obviously uh, pretty confident on the on the uh, the forehand at that age. She's been around for some time, and uh, as this match continues, uh, and I'll keep you updated with the score since it's not on the screen anymore. Jamie Fawless. Uh, Treading water a little bit here at 30 all in her second service game. She'd be wanting to get through this uh, service game pretty quick from here. Just just to get that settled feeling uh, that she's uh, starting to click into gear. As she doesn't really want to go down two breaks in the first set because um, well, it could get really ugly from there, um, actually. So, uh, Zrona Rave up. We'll just give you a bit of background. Actually, what we might do is just uh, reverse the order a little bit um, and go through her uh, her U.S. hard court season to date um, since uh, Wimbledon, and Wimbledon was in July. So the most uh, she's only played one uh, lead-up tournament, and that was the Western and Southern Open in Cincinnati, Ohio, and. Um, that was in the uh, well. That was last week, basically, and she played the uh, the qualifying rounds there. Uh, her ranking, obviously, not high enough at the time, uh, 678, to get into the main draw of that um, uh, WTA 1000 tour. And in that first round qualifying, she faced the fourth seed, the American Alicia Parks, and she lost 3616. Um, so that's the only uh, that's the only uh, match play she's had since Wimbledon. And while we're at it, why not have a look at her Wimbledon um, uh, experience this year? Um, 
she also uh, had to go through qualifying, being ranked 797 going into the Wimbledon uh, tournament. She played um, the qualifying round winning against the Brazilian Laura Pagosi, who was the 26th seed in qualifying. And she, uh, Zrona Raven won that match 5-7, 7-6, the tiebreaker, 6-2. Uh, and she lost her second round qualifying match to the Latvian Daja Semitizaja. Uh, 4-6-1-6. So um, the 38-year-old from Russia, she has not um, been playing a heck of a lot um, of tennis, but I'll tell you what, it's not doing her uh, form at uh, Flushing Meadows any harm. She's brought Jamie Fawless to Juice, and uh, I think she's uh, I think she's right on right on point with uh, the game of Jamie Fawless um, and leading three love in the first set. Um, the, the the match not powering along. It's a little bit sluggish, the progress of this match. Been going 20 minutes, and they're only in the fourth game of the first set. And uh, Fawless, uh, her second serve at uh, 85 miles per hour. And uh, that ball's still in play, just waiting for the score to update. Unfortunately, we don't have any broadcast rights to the footage of um, uh, the US Open. It's streaming on S ESPN. For anyone that's interested, all these qualifying singles, but um, due to all the uh, the geo um, uh, tracking features of uh, all the code that sits behind all the websites all over the internet, um, I am locked out of that streaming service. Uh, it might be streaming in other places, but um, I haven't found anything so far. Uh, Wise Words Media, the producer of this Australian Open Life, we don't have. Um, uh, any broadcast rights to the footage, which is why on screen at the moment you're seeing um, the archive playing of our news bites, um, which gives you an example of um, the type of news uh, that we like to uh, bring to you um, uh, and the footage that we shoot live at uh, qualifying tournaments and also bringing you the sights, sounds, summer of tennis at the Australian Open. And you can look forward to fresh footage uh, this year, the plan is to get along and uh, get some fresh footage this year. As Jamie Fawless, um, I've got to refresh the screen because um, it's not updated. But I think she won that service game. I've got a feeling. And she did. So Jamie Fawless is off the mark, uh, trailing 1-3 uh, in the first set. But Zrona Raver, <laughs> she, she's, she's not... She's not warming up. She is on fire in this uh, first set. She's found her, found her um, line and length with her serve, and she's powering through that game, 40 love, and now goes out to a 4-1 lead. And Jamie Fawless, uh, she would have won that uh, service game, her second service game, and uh, being broken in her first service game, and she would have thought, right, I can take a breather and just concentrate on um, trying to break Zona Rabia's serve. Well, guess what? <laughs> she lost to love and now trails 1-4 uh, to Zorona Rava in the first set. And that's bad news for uh, us here at This Australian Open Life because um, at the end of uh, the first set, we'll be switching gears and taking a break and, uh, and then bringing you some uh, score results from some completed matches. So we'd better get, uh, get to it. And uh, we'll skip the bio for Jamie Fawless and we'll just see... Um, We'll just see how her uh, U.S. hard court um, lead up has gone, and guess what? She hasn't played any lead up tournaments in North America since Wimbledon. Uh, so this qualifying match in New York uh, at the moment is her first match of the U.S. hard court season. So it's um, Without knowing the uh, the reasons why, or maybe she took a break, but she is obviously uh, coming back a little bit rusty and uh, serving uh, here. Uh, the players possibly still um, at the change of ends having a break. We'll just refresh the screen uh, just to make sure because we don't want to assume, yep, they're still having a break. So let's take a look at Jamie Fawless. Um, all the way back to Wimbledon was her last um, uh, match play in any tournament of any kind back in July. She played uh, the qualifying rounds. Um, she was ranked at 169 uh, going into Wimbledon. And she faced the Slovenian, Polo 
Polona Hercog, and uh, uh, Fawless uh, won that match 6-3, 4-6, 6-3, but she uh, went out in the second round of qualifying at Wimbledon, uh, losing to the uh, Slovak uh, to the um, SVK. <laughs> what is that flag? Uh, I don't usually do this, but anyway, um, Slovakia. Well, who is the other one? Slo who is the other one? Slovenia and Slovakia. There you go. That's why I'm confused. She lost to Victoria Haranchakova, uh, one six three six. So um, both of these um, players uh, uh, are coming into this match in uh, far from red hot form. But uh, Zvrona Rava um, has been around the traps for quite some time and, uh, and still playing professionally at the age of 38. Um, she'd be confident in her abilities uh, to get through this. Jamie Fall is uh, leading now in her third service game, 30-15, trailing 1-4 in the first set. This match, um, uh, it's not rocketing along. It, uh, it's been going for 26 minutes this set. And Jamie Fall is her second serve. That's incredibly slow. Jamie, come on, switch it up. 78 miles per hour. Um, you want to be putting a bit of pressure on the Russian. Uh, so we'll just swap back out um, of the, the, the news bites here and uh, just bring back the screen, uh, the score here for you. Um, and uh, you can see uh, Jamie Fawless um, now um, 30 all in her service game, trailing 1-4. Um, and uh, she'd want to want to get a wriggle on here, to be honest. Um, so let's just have a look at the player profiles uh, while those scores are on screen there for you. And don't forget in the chat, the Slam Tracker, the URL is there for you to click onto if you want to bring that up in your screen. And that'll give you um, a little bit of information uh, with the match stats and also a little bit of uh, basic information about... Uh, these players, both of them playing right-handed. And uh, Jamie Fawless, I've just got to refresh my screen here because it's a bit slow. They're still on 30 love. So there's some sort of a delay, I would say. Uh, and uh, Jamie Fawless now facing another break point uh, for the second time in the first set. Zorona Rova is all over her. Um, and uh, if Fawless goes 5-2 uh, down in the first set here, um, and, and with the way the match has gone so far, um, I'm, not <laughs> I'm not feeling confident that she'll uh, come back in this match. But uh, Zorona Rava, she's coached by Ruslan Ivizachev. Uh, her career highlights. In singles, she has won 12 tournaments um, since 2011. Uh, and she's been a finalist in 18 tournaments since 2011. And uh, let's see if I can pick out some um, standout tournaments here. She's won in um, Birmingham, uh, Cincinnati. That's a big challenger tournament. Uh, Memphis um, is, is uh, a decent old tournament there. As a finalist, um, she's been a finalist in... Um, Charles, uh, Charles Town. She was a finalist at Wimbledon. Of course she was. And she was also a finalist at US Open. This was all in 2010, her peak years. Um, she's also been a finalist in Moscow um, and, uh, and Auckland and uh, Cincinnati a couple of times, Philadelphia. In the doubles, she's uh, won 13 times uh, throughout her career. And, um, and she's also been a finalist in, in uh, 20, since 2010, six times. She's won the mixed doubles twice uh, at Wimbledon and the US Open. She won with uh, Roger Ramsheed in 2006. And uh, one, of the, uh, Brian, uh, one of the Brian brothers, um, the US Open in 2004, the mixed doubles. And um, uh, performed as uh, a member of the Russian Federation Cup team since 2003. She's also played at the Olympics representing Russia. So um, no wonder... Jamie Fawless is uh, really having to uh, uh, put on a real... Uh, she's got to concentrate here because she's uh, back to juice. So that's good news. Um, trailing 1-4 in the first set. But uh, Zrona Rava, uh, <laughs> it's fair to say she's an experienced professional on the WTA Tour. So let's have a look over at um, uh, the bio 
for Jamie Fallis. Well, um, the 23-year-old, um, she's basically um, uh, basically established herself on the WTA tour. Um, uh, we first came across her a couple of years ago. Um, she was part of our wild card series. She was granted a wild card into the Australian Open of 2021. Um, and... Uh, and played qualifying there. And, uh, well, she's done well to get her ranking up to 187 in the world because um, you, you, you can't be a slouch at 187 in the world. It's very, very fine margins. And uh, I think that is still at juice, that score. I'm just going to refresh the screen because um, I've just lost a, lost a bit of confidence with this browser that it's actually uh, interactive. Yeah, it's uh, still on juice. Uh, it's Ron Raver leading 4-1. But Jamie Fawless, um, she's basically in the, the early stages of her professional tennis career. She's established herself, and I suppose you could say um, the, the next step for her is to start um, uh, cementing places in the main draw. So it's uh, it's a tough ask for young players um, to, to make that leap from the top 200 into the top 100. It's extremely competitive. Um, and you've also got a lot of uh, uh, older players like Zrona Raver, um, uh, you know, playing well into well into the sunset of their careers and performing very well. Uh, the right-handed uh, Jamie Fawless, uh, she's actually she's one of my people. She's uh, born in Melbourne, Australia. She's coached by Dejan Petrovic and Betty Sek Sekolovsky, and um, she started playing at the age five. And uh, favourite surface is grass. She's had a couple of. She's had a um, a fairly decent uh, result uh, so far in her career. In 2022, she was a finalist in the mixed doubles at the Australian Open with old mate Jason Kubler, who is a Grand Slam doubles champion himself, winning the Australian Open this year with uh, Rinky Hiji Carter, the Australians. Um, uh, victorious there in front of their home, gra home crowd, which we covered extensively and <laughs> very happily. And unhappily, uh, Jamie Fawless has had her serve broken for the second time in the first set, and Zrona Raver is now serving at 91 miles per hour. 31 minutes into the first set, she leads 5-1. She's serving for this first set. So, um, so... It doesn't look good. Uh, we've got to be honest um, and put our hands up here. The forecast is <laughs> a loss of the first set for Jamie Fawless. But she must have heard me speaking because she's just gone, stuff you, uh, <laughs> bloke who walks. And she takes the uh, the opening point of the uh, seventh game of the first set. She leads 15 love. Um, and although, um, for me, this, uh, this first set seems to be um, chugging along at a fairly pedestrian pace. Um, Jamie Fawless has upped her pace and taken the second point in a row off the serve of Zona Raver, and uh, it would be uh, it would be fantastic if she could uh, drive back into contention here uh, to challenge for um, this first set at 1-5 down, but Zrona Raver's having nothing nothing of that. She's just won the next point and trails 15-30 on serve at the 33-minute mark. So um, just to uh, go over the format again um, for you, and we'll just go back to uh, the news bites here. Um, oh, for those of you that are um, visually engaged, um, I'll just get that. Whoops, I'll just get that, um, I'll just, <laughs> just talking to myself here, telling myself what I'm going to do and not do. Just get that uh, out to the full screen for you. For those of you that like to watch, I don't know if anyone remembers that Guinness ad a couple of decades ago. <laughs> I like to watch. I'll explain explain that later. But uh, Zrona Raver is um, still trailing on serve, and Fawless has a chance. She has her first break point of the first set on the serve of uh, Zrona Raver. Uh, Vera Zrona Raver um, trailing 30-40 on serve. Uh, and uh, this uh, this demonstrates the mentality of Jamie Fawless. Um, 
She's only 23, but experienced now in uh, tournament tennis at Grand Slams and qualifying rounds. Uh, she's uh, got plenty of street cred um, and has one break point. So we'll just try and edge her over the line. And she breaks serve and now trails 2-5 in the first set. Great work, Jamie Fawless, to uh, to keep, keep yourself in the mix and uh, <laughs> keep us in your match because we're following this match. Uh, first round qualifying singles for the women on day two at the US Open in Flushing Meadows where it's just ticked over to 6.14 in the evening and it's a balmy 25 degrees and sunny in uh, New York there. For all of you who are listening or watching online, uh, joining us, we really appreciate you uh, listening, uh, watching on your iPhone, your iPad. I don't know what you're following us on, but um, we really appreciate your company. As uh, Jamie Fawless um, uh, will, um, her, her goal for this next service game, the, um, the eighth game of the first set, is to just get through and get through as quick as she can and uh, put the pressure back on the Russian serve. So um, she's about to uh, make her first serve here. Um, it must be a change of ends. So uh, that gives us a chance to go back into um, uh, the career history of Vera Zvonareva. She was a quarter finalist at the, <laughs> the Kremlin Cup. Oh dear. And she reached, reached the second round um, four times, um, uh, including the US Open um, during 2018. But she actually lost in the first round of uh, four tournaments, including Wimbledon. And she went through qualifying twice, um, including the Australian Open in 2018. But she had two WTA doubles titles victories. Um, now, I won't go, um, there's a lot of detail um, in her background, her profile here. But we won't go um, uh, too, too deep into it. But I might just put the bio for these players in the chat um, because that's what the chat is designed for, to be interactive. And uh, we want you to uh, join the conversation. So we'll just put um, the uh, profile for uh, Vera Zronareva in the chat and also Jamie Fawless. And, um, and just take a look for yourself at um, where these uh, players have come from. Um, and for Jamie Fawless, we'll just plug in the, um, uh, I'll just plug in her, her match profile um, for various tournaments she's played throughout this year. And we'll go back, take you back to the live score um, for this match, the first set of this first round qualifying match uh, between these two players. Um, and the US Open, it's great to have it back. And uh, it's also great to have um, US men have been really making a mark this year. And uh, for myself, uh, <laughs> growing up through the 70s and the 80s, watching uh, Gu Guillermo Vilas and um, Jimmy Connors and uh, the young John, John McEnroe when he arrived on the scene, uh, it was just um, fantastic viewing. And then, of course, you had uh, the, the glory years of um, Pete Sampras and um, Andre Agassi and uh, <laughs> a cast of thousands. And um, US men's tennis, uh, it's fair to say, since Andy Roddick retired almost, it uh, must be about 15 years ago now, the US men haven't uh, been a force in world tennis like they used to be. And uh, they've got a rich history, the American men and the women, of course. So um, it's great, great to be um, uh, living vicariously through a browser, <laughs> the New York lifestyle, where it's um, about 6, 17 p.m. in the evening, 25 degrees, sunny. <laughs> what more could you want? So um, uh, Jamie Fawless uh, serving. She's 30 all in the, uh, the eighth game of the first set in this match. Uh, serving, not not at a big pace, uh, has to be said. Zona Rover, um, she cracked the 101 mile uh, per hour mark with one of her serves in the first couple of games. And Jamie Fawless is, uh, 
Yeah, it's not not the most powerful serves. Um, now, I'm just wondering if uh, Jamie Fawless uh, might be struggling uh, to get into a rhythm, possibly because of an injury. She hasn't played any tournament tennis since Wimbledon qualifying back in July. But this is what we like to see. She's now uh, got the chance to... Uh, she's a point up at 40-30. Uh, on the cusp of securing her third game of the first set. Which is uh, music to our ears because we want to follow this first set for as long as possible. A, l uh, a little bit, yeah, a lot of bias uh, at this Australian Open life for any Australian player that crops up in our uh, viewfinder and uh, serves at 91 miles per hour, Jamie Fawless at 40-30. At the 40 minute mark of this uh, first set in this first round women's qualifying singles match of uh, at the US Open and uh, an extended rally here I'd say and um, you can follow this match yourself in your own browser in the chat I've dumped a couple of uh, links a couple of URLs to um, the slam tracker um, for this match and Jamie Fawless wins that service game and she's pulled it back from 4-1 um, from to 5-3. And Zvonareva has lost the opening point of her service game. She's serving for the first set. And Jamie Fawless is uh, finding some form. Uh, uh, hitting the lines uh, and putting the serve of Zvonareva uh, under pressure. Uh, Jamie Fawless broke... Uh, broke the serve of the Russian in the last service game for the Russian. Um, it's now 15 all. Uh, we'll just bring this back to the... Oh, it's on the screen there for you. Uh, and you can see um, that. I'll just see if I can refresh this for you. Uh, no, I can't. There's a little bit of a lag there, and I'm not quite sure... I'm not quite sure why... Um, properties, no, I don't know why I can't refresh that, oh, here we go, um, refresh, and that should bring it up, um, uh, the current scores, so um, 15 all, 5-3, the Russian leading, and uh, just a reminder that uh, we will leave this uh, first set with uh, Jamie Fawless uh, leading 30-15, which is not what you're... Yes, you're seeing that at the same time. I'm just double-checking. Um, at the completion of this first set, we'll leave this match and we'll take um, a bit of a break and uh, come back with some... Uh, we'll report on some completed matches, some scores there, and see if we can find any upsets or familiar names. But uh, part of the fun of uh, covering qualifying in Grand Slams is learning about the players that are just outside the top 100 um, who might be shooting up the rankings through uh, acquiring points on the Challenger Tour as uh, Jamie Fall is now um, uh, trailing trailing the Russian 40-30. Uh, so we'll just uh, stick with this and concentrate that uh, she's facing uh, going down one set to love here as uh, Zvona Reva. Her serve, for 38 years old, serving at 100 miles per hour <laughs> at a Grand Slam in qualifying. And you can see um, uh, the, Ru the Russian just means business. Um, and serving a second serve at 94 miles per hour, and she's won that first set. Well, that's, that's a shame for Jamie Fawless. Um, not a... a, a <laughs> Uh, not a, a, a flawless performance from the Russian against Jamie Fawless. And let's just quickly, uh, before we leave this match, um, and, uh, and, and um, wishing Jamie the best of luck, a fellow Australian, but let's just run through the stats for the first set, um, which uh, uh, um, uh, there was one ace for the Russian, uh, one double fault for the Russian, uh, two for Fawless. And so here's where it matters is that uh, the percentage of first serves in the Russian, 66%, Fawless, Jamie Fawless, 56%. But the Russian, uh, far more um, uh, practical on first serve, she won 76% of her points 
were won on the first serve. Jamie Fawless uh, coming in at uh, barely half. and um, But she was doing all right on her second serve, winning 43% of uh, her second serves. Uh, when they were in, she won those points. Uh, neither player went to the net, um, which is not unusual for New York. Um, pretty even, a very even split for the break points won uh, between the two of them. But, um, yeah, the Russian was all over the serve of Jamie Fawless. Uh, she won 50% of the points um, that she faced off the serve of Jamie Fawless. And uh, Jamie, even though she put pressure for one game uh, breaking serve once, she just wasn't able to um, uh, dictate terms at all on the serve of the Russian. And the total points, it's not too far apart, but yeah, 36 um, to 28 in favour of the Russian. Um, yeah, you'd have to say that uh, Jamie Fawless has uh, a real job in front of her to um, stay in this match. So we're going to leave Jamie Fawless there and uh, we're going to take a little bit of an extended break um, with a couple of teasers. Um, for you to enjoy and um, when we come back from the break uh, we will uh, take a look at some completed matches uh, and bring you up to date with some scores there so as we like to say in the classics don't go away we'll be right back
Troy Gardens every Wednesday from 12.30 p.m. G'day, welcome to this Australian Open Life. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. You're here, you made it. And if you're just joining us, where have you been? We've been going for an hour, and uh, we've just um, we've just uh, watched Jamie Fawless, uh, the Australian from Melbourne, Australia. She's one of us, ranked 187 in the world, taking on an extremely experienced. Uh, Russian by the name of Vera Zvonareva, um, uh, 38 years of age, <laughs> plays right-handed from Moscow, Russia, but playing as a neutral under the terms of, um, well, um, <laughs> we won't go into that topic, but uh, yeah, Jamie down one, down one set to love in uh, her opening women's qualifying singles match, and so we've left that for the moment. So uh, we've taken a short break, and uh, what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to go through um, we're going to go through the um, completed matches. Uh, not all of them, just some of them. Uh, we're just going to uh, bring you up to speed um, with some of the results um, from uh, women's qualifying singles. Uh, there's um, six live matches going on at the moment. But uh, during this segment of our coverage on uh, qualifying day two at Flushing Meadows in New York, where it's uh, just ticking around at 6.31 in the evening, and, uh, and those New Yorkers in the Big Apple, uh, they're taking in a very nice sunset, 25 degrees there currently. Um, but we're going to look at, uh, it's just the women today. We did the men yesterday, and uh, tomorrow we'll alternate back to the men, and... Uh, <laughs> and Provided we don't have a sleep in by accident on Saturday, we'll come back with the women. Um, uh, um, so yeah, that's uh, that's the way we're doing it. So um, let's just uh, switch gears for a second. And so uh, every time you uh, hear that uh, that transition sound. Um, that's just letting you know that we're switching up a gear and changing topics. So uh, just in the background, for those of you that like to be visually engaged, uh, some of the hero shots, the sights, the sounds, the summer of tennis. Um, but uh, it's all audio, radio style coverage for us. So let's uh, just take a look at some of the completed matches. And I'm going to chuck this in, um, in the chat because uh, it's no big secret uh, how things work here at this Australian Open Life. We want to uh, share what we know. Uh, we'll just put the link there uh, to the completed matches. Uh, you can, um, you're welcome to look at those uh, as we go through them. Uh, and uh, I can see there's 6, 12, 18. There's 24, 30, 36 complete. That's, comp that's men and women, that has to be. Just hang on one second. <laughs> Let's just straighten up a bit. There's 6, 12, 18. Um, there's about uh, 22 matches uh, completed on day two of qualifying. Uh, let's go through the first six. Um, uh, just oh, there's a name. There is a name that I um, that I know. Uh, Haley Baptiste. Let's just have a look at uh, Haley Baptiste. Um, I'm going to chuck this. Uh, I'm going to chuck chuck this URL in the uh, in the chat. Uh, don't forget that you only have to be a subscriber for uh, ninety uh, for sixty seconds. Join the conversation. Let us know how we're going. Um, is there any players that you want to know anything about? So um, Haley Baptiste has um, she's completed a match against another Russian or Belarusian. Hayley Baptiste, uh, unseeded in Wimbledon's qualifying, has lost her first round 
singles match and she is out basically um, losing 6-3 6-4 to Schneider the number two seed in women's qualifying that match taking place on the show court the grandstand show court um, in an hour and 17 minutes Hayley Baptiste um, excuse me we came across Hayley Baptiste uh, at the Australian Open in um, was it this year in 2023 Oh dear, <laughs> fancy not being able to remember that. Anyway, uh, we caught up with her um, and uh, came across her match on one of the, the outside courts at, uh, at Melbourne Park. And uh, she is not backwards in coming, <laughs> coming forwards. She was giving her, um, giving her team an absolute bollocking <laughs> at the change of ends. Uh, she was um, <laughs> she was just telling them to just just calm down a bit. She knew what she was doing. <laughs> oh dear, that's very funny. Um, so that's uh, the first completed match. We'll just go through the first six. So that's a bit of a shame because we like seeing our favourites um, get up uh, for a win. Um, and it's nice to see familiar names popping up from time to time. But uh, poor old Hayley Baptiste going down on this occasion. You know, home Grand Slam. It's never easy performing at a home Grand Slam. Just, <laughs> God, just ask our favourite Australian recently retired singles player, Samantha Stoza. Oh, she could never, uh, she could never get through to the second week during her career. She was um, always a nervous performer at her home Grand Slam. But anyway, uh, we also have a completed match where an American... Uh, now, hang on, I've just got to keep remembering to click the right link here. Um, we've got another completed match. An American, in this case, has got up in straight sets. No, <laughs> that doesn't look right. You can't be... Th oh, okay, so there's a retirement in this particular match. Uh, Scott, the American Scott, she's uh, quite a good performer. She's uh, got up 6-2. The match... Um, uh, um, uh, finished at three all in the second set with the retirement of Stefanovic, um, an hour and 15 minutes. That's just incredible um, that it would go that long. Uh, oh, that's surprising. So excuse me while I just um, wrap my head around that statistic. But uh, the American men and the American women... Uh, in the last 18 months or two years, they're gradually um, uh, coming back uh, to the fore, which is great news for all of us. Um, on court four, Hrunchakova, the ninth seed, defeated the Argentinian Carl 6-3, uh, 6-4 in an hour and 38 minutes. Uh, on court four in the second match of the day, uh, a much tighter tussle uh, between uh, Rob, the uh, the French player, um, up against Kraus. And uh, I've decided on a policy. We're not going to research. Uh, if I don't recognise the flag, I'm not going to waste time uh, trying to click open links and uh, do that. So Kraus uh, uh, winning that match against uh, Rob of France. Uh, in three sets, she won 4-6, 6-2, 6-2. -6 that match, two hours and two minutes. Um, so she's earned uh, her paycheck, um, made to work for it there in that first round match of qualifying. On court five, an American uh, went down to an Argentinian. Beck lost 2-6, 1-6 to Riera. And the final match of this particular segment I can't believe what I'm seeing. A match that ne went nearly three hours. That is the longest women's match and almost um, longer than some of the men's that I've seen so far. Uh, Arango, uh, probably an Ecuadorian, I'd say, by the looks of that flag, winning 4-6, 6-1, 7-6 in the tiebreaker. In the third, the super tiebreaker, she was the first to 10 points, uh, winning that tiebreaker set 10 points to seven points in the third set tiebreaker against uh, the player from Turkey, uh, Oz. <laughs> so that's uh, the, the that's those uh, completed matches there. 
So let us know what you think in the comments uh, or the chat. Uh, we'd love to know what uh, what your thoughts are about women's qualifying today. Uh, is there any plays you'd like us to uh, uh, take a look at um, or look into? Or is there a match you've got your eye on that you'd like us to cover? Or are you just happy with uh, the random nature <laughs> of our coverage? So speaking of random, uh, we're going to take another shorter quick break. And, um, and when we come back, we're going to... Uh, uh, find another um, live match to uh, take us through. We'll follow that match uh, for a full set with uh, audio, radio, st radio style commentary, and plenty uh, of uh, visual delights from previous Australian Opens uh, for you to enjoy. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, uh, please join us um, and don't just uh, like what we're doing. Yeah, subscribe, join the conversation. Let us know uh, what your expectations are for this year's US Open. Who do you think the favourites are? And uh, as we like to say, fairly frequently, don't go away. We'll be right back. G'day, welcome back. We tell stories and our story is tennis on this Australian Open Life produced by Wise Words Media from uh, live from Melbourne, Australia. We are the only independent media outlet covering the US Open and in particular qualifying at the US Open. And uh, we're, com we're coming back from this short break. Uh, we're gonna follow another match um, through to its uh, the completion of uh, the current set of this live match. And the one that we've chosen is a match uh, between an American and another Russian, would you believe, or Belarusian. So it's Glosman against Gobitsova. And that match is currently in the second set, uh, which the uh, the Russian or Belarusian uh, won that first set 6-4. It is uh, one game all in, um, in the, uh, the third game of the second set. So let's uh, just take a look. Uh, Glosman, uh, the American, up against the Belarusian Govitsova. And um, uh, we will be able to bring you a point-by-point -point coverage, audio, radio-style coverage of this match. And uh, currently it is uh, the Belarusian serving at one all. She's won the first point uh, of her service game. And uh, I'll just uh, give you the full screen here. Uh, for these uh, for these girls, there we go. That's a bit better, and uh, and we'll be able to follow this point by point. So um, uh, let us know what you think. Um, I'm going to um, uh, put the profiles of these players in the chat, so um, so we know uh, so you know <laughs> what we're doing, um, and. Uh, just uh, bear with me while I set this up for you. Um, versus Govitsova, Belarus, uh, Glosman versus uh, that. And I'll just put the player profiles up there for you and then we'll be uh, all set as uh, 
the Belarusian goes out to a 30-15 lead in the third game of the second set. Uh, she's on serve. And I'll just put I'll just put the profile here of these players. As soon as this lets me. Ranked 922 in the world, the uh, the American. So obviously, um, you know, most most players um, uh, will enjoy a uh, a wild card to their uh, home Grand Slam. So that's possibly the case for Glosman. Um, but uh, the Belarusian, uh, she her profile does not have a ranking, which is fairly annoying. But that's all right. We'll find it. Uh, her career ranking at the moment, we'll find that in another spot. Uh, now leading 40-30 in her service game, the Belarusian. And I'll be able to bring you point by point coverage. Uh, this game has gone, um, has gone, uh, uh, you know, just got to work out <laughs> how they're scoring it here. Um, the Belarusian, uh, yeah, 15 love, 30 love. Then she lost uh, a point on serve to go 30-15 and 30 all. And uh, Glosman has lost uh, that game uh, to the serve of the Belarusian. She lost with a forehand forced error. Uh, so she was possibly trying to force the pace. But um, she, she lost the first set, the American 6-4. Uh, and he's trailing 2-1 uh, in the second set there. And this match has been going uh, 57 uh, minutes. I'm just going to refresh this for you. Uh, and bring that up to speed. And that's better. So Glosman now serving. So we're going we're gonna to follow this match uh, through to its conclusion of this set only. And uh, once this uh, first set concludes, we'll take we'll take another break, and uh, we'll um, uh, then go back to uh, bring you up to date with some some scores from completed matches. But uh, while this set while this uh, set is underway, and while this set is underway, I'm sorry, I'm a bit distracted because uh, the profile. Of the Belarusian, okay. <laughs> These player profiles on the WTA Tour website is fairly, it has to be said, empty. <laughs> dear oh dear. And uh, Vivian Glosman, uh, the American, uh, she's just started starting out in her WTA tennis career. And it's fair to say that there's um, <laughs> there's blanks everywhere in her profile, but that's all right. We'll find other things to talk about as we follow the, the scores for this match. Glosman um, Glosman serving now. Um, she's uh, won the first point of her service game as the Belarusian uh, loses that point with a, uh, an unforced forehand error. And uh, let us know what you think of this coverage. Um, actually, um, we like to do things um, uh, fairly uniquely here at this Australian Open Life because we want to bring you dynamic content. There's um, a lot of media platforms in the independent space that are just talking heads in front of a camera and a green screen. That's not how we do things here. We like to get out, get out on site um, and, uh, and harvest uh, footage live on location. And in this case, the location being Melbourne Park. Um, we're uh, planning uh, the last last year at um, the 2023 Australian Open this year in January. Um, we didn't go down to uh, Melbourne Park at all. Um, we were just relying on um, uh, archive footage that we collected the previous uh, year in 2022. But um, with a bit of planning and a bit of extra resources this year, uh, we'll be hope, um, planning to be back at Melbourne Park. And in fact... Um, Wise Words Media is uh, putting together, uh, it's in development, um, a concept for a live outdoor um, broadcast, live stream, direct to uh, the over-the-top streaming space on the internet. 
um, uh, via our website, wisewords.com.au. But also we're looking for broadcast partners in the OTT sector um, uh, as a, uh, a fast channel concept, um, but more about that later on because we want to focus on the tennis. And in particular, we want to focus on Vivian Glosman up against Olga Govitsova from Belarusia, the American trailing 30-40 on serve in the fourth game of the second set. And uh, there's a break point opportunity for Goritsova, but she's um, lost that one with a forced, uh, a forehand unforced error. And uh, but uh, Glosman ranked 922 in the world. She's uh, she's um, uh, putting in a, a, a good shift here. So excuse me while I uh, just. Um, Take a couple of mouthfuls of tea. So um, we're going to take you back to some news bites from our um, archive footage. And uh, we'll keep you updated with the score as um, Glosman performing quite well in this service game. Uh, she has taken advantage on her serve that she'll be able to draw level. Um, she'll be aiming to go two all. So we'll just go back to uh, the news bites here. Uh, just for those of you that like to uh, keep things uh, visually interesting here, um, we'll keep that running in the background. And this is just a sample of the type of content that we like to bring through this Australian Open life and keep you updated with, um, with news and uh, not too many views, actually, um, because uh, we're just a, um, a boutique bespoke uh, digital uh, agency and uh, uh, we put out uh, pretty unique content so there's only so much we can do and what we do do we like to do it well so um, the current score with uh, Glosman on serve she's won that service game and uh, it's two all in the second set uh, between these two players um, it was uh, off the back of a, uh, a backhand volley uh, unforced error from Gobbitsova. So she'll be happy with that, the American. Uh, most likely playing, I would say, um, just looking at her WTA Tour profile, I would say this is her first uh, US Open. And um, But she's played a few, uh, a couple of lead-up tournaments. So let's just go through those for the American um, while we are waiting for uh, the uh, play to restart with um, the Belarusian on serve, and she's lost the first point of um, her service game, the fifth game of the second set. Glosman uh, leading 15 love, uh, winning that point off the Russian serve. Another um, error from the Russian. Um, with both of them, um, uh, oh, there was a quick uh, stat there. With both of them, uh, in terms of uh, net points won, Glosman leading 71% uh, winning uh, the net points compared to 47% of Govitsova. But uh, Vivian Glosman, uh, the young American, uh, ranked 922 in the world. Um, I'm pretty sure I got that stat right. <laughs> I can't be sure because the stats, I tell you, the stats for these two players are um, <laughs> quite sparse. And it's unusual to see uh, rankings um, uh, not filled in here. But for the Russians and the Belarusians, uh, they cannot earn any rankings points at these uh, Grand Slam tournaments. As uh, Vivian Glosman uh, breaks back another couple of points, and she now has pressure to break the serve of the Russian. At uh, The Russian is down 15.40. And we'll just stick with this. Not a bad effort by um, Vivian Glosman. Uh, and uh, I think she's won that one. Yep, she's hit a forehand winner to win the um, the fourth game of the second set. It's no, it's still. Oh, I'm gonna have to refresh my screen just to be uh, just to be sure of things which I didn't have to do yesterday, actually, when we were covering the men. 
But uh, no, that game is still in progress. So um, uh, Gobbit Sober, the Belarusian, uh, serving at 30-40 to stay in this game and uh, keep the American honest, uh, trying to uh, save her serve here as she sends one down. Yep, at 86 miles per hour, that second serve. It's now Deuce. So she had a couple of break point opportunities, uh, Glosman, the American. But um, Gobbit Sober managed to um, hang tough and... Um, uh, it's now Juice at two all in the second set. And the Belarusian uh, is now got a break point um, up against her as uh, she lost that last point on serve with a forehand forced error. So Glosman um, has a bit of chops about her by the looks of it. Um, there's been quite a few forehand and backhand forced and unforced errors from Gobbit Sober. So in layman's terms, <laughs> you could say she's she's running hot and gold. Um, in the background there, you see uh, some of the archive footage from our news bites uh, over the journey over the last couple of years that this Australian Open life has been covering the Australian Open. And this year we found that we were able to uh, um, uh, ratchet things up a gear or two and uh, making our content more dynamic and more interactive that uh, we, um, we brought these live stream um, uh, uh, coverage as a strategy into our uh, coverage uh, because we know that there's a lot of people out there who are fans of Grand Slam tennis and tennis fans overall. And, um, and Grand Slams are our niche, especially wild cards and qualifying. Uh, we have a few different playlists on our uh, media platform with regards to uh, shop, make a showcase and uh, play a watch and uh, the podcast uh, that goes by the name of The Hit Up. Um, and you can find that on the ACAST platform as uh, Gobbit Sova is down a break point yet again and uh, facing a break point on her serve uh, where Glosman is looking to go 3 2 up in the second set. And it's gone back to Juice. <laughs> a forehand smash winner from Gobbit Sova. And the winners through set two. Govet Sober is the very definition of running hot and cold. She's hit 20 winners in uh, the second set. Glosman only hitting 11 winners. But uh, for all the good work she's doing hitting these winners, Govet Sober, just committing too many errors, uh, unforced errors on her forehand and backhand. So um, I'm sorry, I can't yet find much information on uh, oh here we go we can uh, I can go through this for you. Uh, I'll try and find a bio for each player, but um, at the moment, uh, not surprising that uh, Vivian Glosman has yet to complete a profile on the WTA Tour website. But that's all right. There could be one on the ITF Tour website. And if you're interested in um, the Slam Tracker for this match, uh, there's a link there. Um, in the chat, and uh, Glosman fails to break the serve of Gobbit Sober. She's lost that game um, eventually with a backhand forced error, so obviously trying just that little bit um, too hard um, to win uh, the break in that game. So uh, Gobbit Sober holds serve for a 3 2 lead in the second set. And uh, while we're on Gobbit Sober, she's coast. She's coast. <laughs> She's not coasting in this match. She is coached by Vladimir Cook. And uh, she has two brothers. And um, her uh, she's a baseliner by trade. And her favourite shot is a backhand on clay. That's her favourite surface. And she's playing uh, tennis since the age of six. She's um, uh, trilingual. <laughs> Belarusian, Russian and English. Uh, she can... Um, she can sit down and chat in any cafe in anywhere around the world in those languages if you uh, <laughs> if you buy a coffee. Uh, she likes rap, rock, pop, and Russian music. Uh, like all women, she likes shopping, but uh, unlike most women, she also likes hockey. And uh, favorite places to visit are Hawaii and Belarus. And her favorite tournament is in Dubai. 
uh, smashing forehand winners down the line than in the sand. Uh, her tennis, tennis idols growing up were Lindsay Davenport and Jennifer Capriati. Now, that's an interesting combination because you could not get two more different uh, uh, professional tennis players than Lindsay Davenport and Jennifer Capriati. Now, let me tell you why. <laughs> both outstanding uh, um, in their time. Um, both uh, Grand Slam winners. Jennifer Capriati won the Australian Open. And Lindsay Davenport, after years of toil, eventually won the U.S. Open. And uh, Lindsay Davenport, quite tall, and Jennifer Capriati, tallish, but uh, with great speed around the court and um, uh, a breakout player in her teenage years. She hit her peak fairly early, had a few issues uh, in her 20s and came back and won the Australian Open. You could not get two more different players. That's, uh, that's really interesting to see that. Now, um, uh, back to the match. Uh, we are on serve with uh, Glosman. They've come back from the change of ends. Glosman serving at 72 miles per hour as this match uh, just ticks over the hour mark. Um, Govitsova winning the first set 6-4, leading 3-2 in the second set. Glosman on serve winning the first point of her service game. Govitsova converts the next point. It's 15 all in the sixth game of the second set. Going back to uh, the career highlights of Olga Govitsova, the Belarusian. Uh, she's been a finalist as a singles player four times uh, in Tashkent, which is in everybody. Is that t uh, Kazakhstan? Um, it's one of the stands anyway. Uh, Tashkent, uh, Pontevedra Beach, Moscow and Memphis. As a doubles player, she's had a lot of success, winning eight tournaments. Uh, Strasbourg um, in Memphis, Birmingham, uh, New Haven, uh, Beijing, uh, Guangzhou, uh, Tashkent, uh, Istanbul. She's been a finalist six times um, in Monterey, um, uh, Memphis, uh, College Park, and Charleston in America. And she's also represented Belarusia as uh, a member of their Federation Cup team, and she's also played in the Olympics. And uh, we'll just uh, double-check the score here for you. Um, uh, Glosman leading 40-30 love, 40-30 uh, on serve, uh, looking to um, uh, draw back level uh, with the Belarusian um, at three all in the sixth game of the second set, uh, serving at uh, 83 miles per hour here, Glosman. Um, and I can't tell you, um, her profile is so sparse, Vivian Glosman. I can't even tell you whether she's left or right-handed. <laughs> but I'm going to go looking for her, um, I'm going to go looking for an ITF player profile for the Challenger circuit. There might be something there. Is usually a good bet. Um, and Glosman serves and she holds, holds to go three all in the second set. This match being played on court seven. Uh, they've been going an hour in New York in the Big Apple. It's just ticking over uh, 7 p.m. there in New York. It's uh, dropped a couple of degrees since we started anyway. We've been going um, an hour and a half here at this Australian Open Life. And it is a sunny, brisk, late winter's morning at our production studios in Melbourne, Australia. And that compares pretty well with the sunny 23 degrees um, in the evening in New York. So... As uh, Govitsova prepares uh, to serve, she serves a uh, second serve going down at 78 miles per hour. And I can see that it was another backhand unforced error that uh, brought Govitsova undone in her quest to break the serve in the last game of Glosman. So she'd want to tighten up with her unforced errors, um, uh, Govitsova. She's running very hot and cold. Uh, some might say she's mercurial, but I don't know her well enough. Uh, to confirm that she leads 15 love in this service game. So Govitsova, just going back to her profile, she finished uh, the 2019 season inside the top 100 for the first time since 2016 uh, at 194 in the world. And she, um, in 2019, she contested one WTA main draw that was in Tashkent. And uh, the suspense is killing me. I've got to look this up to see which stand it's in. Uzbekistan, of course it is, because the Socceroos play a lot of qualifiers in Uzbekistan. Um, Govitsova uh, has played qualifying uh, three times, failed three times in uh, um, 2019, this is. 
And she also won a singles title and uh, two doubles titles on the ITF Challenger circuit. Um, so she's got a fairly extensive uh, profile there since she debuted in professional tennis in 2002, which makes me think that she's been kicking around the locker rooms with uh, Vera Zronareva, uh, who we featured in the first match this morning. Um, they've probably seen a lot of each other over the years, so no doubt she must be well into her 30s, Olga Gobitsova. Um, and just checking the live score here. Um, uh, Glosman uh, giving a fairly good account of herself. Uh, she is uh, now down 15.30 on the serve of Gobitsova. Three all in the second set. She'll be looking to win this second set and, um, and progress through to the second round of qualifying um, uh, Vivian Glosman. And uh, speaking of which, I think I might have a go at finding an ITF player profile for uh, Vivian Glosman because um, we just don't want to we just don't want to glosman over the facts. Uh, sorry about that. That is a um, unintended pun. So we'll just go into her ITF player profile as um, uh, on serve. Um, uh, Govitsova is making slow progress through this service game, leading 30-15. I'm going to refresh the screen because uh, for some reason my gut feeling is I don't trust it. And she's won that service game, uh, the Belarusian. She now leads 4-3 in, uh, in the second set. Um, and she uh, won the final point thanks to Glosman making a, uh, a, a forced error on the forehand. So um, the ITF profile. For <laughs> I'm just giggling because it says Valerie Glosman. Come on. <laughs> Come on. It's the same player, but um, <laughs> oh dear, it's the same player, but uh, they've got her listed as Valerie, and on the uh, Slam Tracker, they've got her listed as Vivian. <laughs> Come on, I'm just going to double check this again. Oh, Valerie! Oh, there you go. It's my dyslexia. <laughs> it's the dyslexia uh, catching me out. Dyslexia I never knew I had. <laughs> I've swapped Valerie for Vivian. Um, no matter, uh, <laughs> the dual identity Glosman, uh, ranked 922 in the world, is uh, at the service line, serving 74 miles per hour. Um, at, uh, she's trailing 4-6-3-4 and now Love 15 in the eighth game of the <laughs> second set. Oh dear. You wouldn't, you wouldn't want to think I was a professional, would you? Um, I've found the... So the, the ITF um, player profile for uh, <laughs> Valerie... Valerie... Valerie Glosman. Uh, she's in August uh, 2023, ranked 922. In February 2023, she was ranked 867. And uh, her rankings... Uh, obviously, she's just starting out on her um, uh, WTA... Uh, career um, at 2022, she was ranked 878 in the world. So uh, I'm, I apologise that I can't uh, tell you too much about uh, Valerie uh, Glosman. Uh, there's no um, uh, titles uh, information that she's uh, contested as a finalist or a winner. Um, her points breakdown, um, usually the ITF uh, tour website, has some fairly extensive stats for players who contest ITF Challenger Tours uh, around the world. But um, clearly, uh, Valerie uh, Glosman, the American, ranked 922 in the world. Clearly, uh, she is uh, starting out um, and is on, on the, uh, in taking the first steps uh, into a professional tennis career. So we wish her all the best as she, uh, <laughs> as she uh, plays uh, this match taking place on court seven in the Big Apple, in front of her home crowd. I can't even tell you uh, what town or state she's from in America, but um, she'll be basking in that 23 degrees, that sunny 23 degrees, and no doubt the uh, <laughs> the New York love um, being directed at her from uh, the stands there in New York. 
So uh, let's um, let's bring you back to um, uh, reality <laughs> here. There you go. <laughs> Qualifying day two at the US Open 2023. This is our live stream presentation produced by Wise Words Media. We're based in Melbourne, Australia. We tell stories and our story is tennis. And the story of the day is that Jamie Fawless, our, uh, the first live match that we featured this morning, uh, she lost her first set uh, to the Russian, uh, Vera Zvonareva, the 38-year-old Russian. Um, she lost that match. Um, uh, she lost that first set, 6-4. Uh, uh, she um, well, it wasn't looking too good for a while. She was down 4-1 and pulled it back to 5-2. Uh, or was it 5-3? At any rate, uh, she lost that first set and uh, that match is still currently live. And uh, why not? Let's, let's, let's tell you how it's going. Uh, are they still going, in fact? Um, she must have lost. I can't see her name here. Uh, so we won't, we won't uh, spend too much time looking into that. Because um, oh, that's, that's the guys and the girls. All right, so for the sake of... <laughs> For the sake of consistency, let's see if we can find out Jamie Fawless is going. Um, she must have lost. <laughs> That's just depressing. Hang on a second. No, I can't see that Australian flag. Oh, that is, <laughs> that's annoying. Oh, well. Um, and we're currently following uh, the second set match play on court seven between uh, Valerie, not Vivian <laughs> Glosman of America, ranked 922 in the world, and she's up against the Belarusian Olga Govitsova and trailing 4-6, 15-40 in the, in the ninth game of the second set. They're four all in the second set. So um, we're going to follow this um, uh, through to uh, the end of this set. And we'll just turn that dance music down a tiny bit. And um, once this first set is completed, uh, once this set is completed, as Govitsova um, wins that game, that service game with a forehand winner, and um, she is the definition of mercurial. She's running hot and cold, smashing winners all over the place, outpacing her American opponent for winners, but she is losing a lot of points on forced and unforced errors. So um, Glosman... Um, She'll still like her chances of saving this match. She is serving to stay in the match at 4-6, uh, 4-5 four, four, down in this match. The, uh, it's been going an hour and 12 minutes. And we'll focus on this and straighten up. This could be the penultimate game. So we want to um, follow this along point by point. Um, the 10th game of the second set is about to start. They're having a change of ends. Um, so we'll just uh, concentrate here. Um, you can follow along uh, the stats. I cannot, through this uh, broadcast software, I can't actually um, scroll down the page. I'll refresh the screen here for you, the score um, for this match, and you'll see that uh, uh, Viv Valerie Glosman is uh, yet to serve. Now, if you want the stats that are below there, um, I've put the link to the slam tracker for this match in the chat. Uh, join the conversation. Uh, please join the conversation. Start a conversation. But you do need to be a subscriber um, for the grand total of 60 seconds as um, Glosman sends down the opening serve at about um, just over 80, uh, 83 miles per hour. Uh, the ball's in play. And the result of that point is, <laughs> is coming. And uh, Govitsova wins the first point of that um, service game, the tenth serve, uh, the tenth game of the second set. Glosman, um, a backhand unforced error. Now um, she has been making a few errors, uh, Valerie Glosman, and uh, this is not the time to be doing it. But uh, all she has to do is stay in the moment and stay in the point because odds are that uh, Olga Govitsova will um, hand her a point back, and that's exactly what she's done. Govitsova lost the second service uh, point of this game uh, through an unforced forehand error. And Glosman goes up 30-15. So uh, we'll be cheering for her here because um, 
it's always fun to um, watch uh, a live match go through to a tiebreaker. And, gee, we see a cracker yesterday. But uh, we've done the men. Gave them a good red-hot go yesterday, so we'll stick with the women as another another error from uh, Gobbert Sova. Uh, this time a forehand-forced error. So that's all she has to do, the American. Um, to win this match, all she has to do is stay in the moment, stay in the point, keep the ball in court, keep it in play, and let the Belarusian Gobbert Sova hand her the match <laughs> with, with one unforced or forced error after the other. Um... So we'll leave this live score on the screen there for you uh, for the time being. And uh, we'll just keep this um, playing along, uh, the, <laughs> the Brazilian dance music playing along in the background. Um, as uh, a 75 mile per hour serve is sent down by Glosman and uh, she loses that uh, service point. Um, and that game is done and Gobbert's over. She is, uh, it's fair to say, we've only met her today, but uh, she's as predictable as, uh, <laughs> she's as predictable as frost in the sunshine on the lawn on a winter's morning. It's going to disappear. And if uh, Valerie Glosman can uh, just keep the ball in play, stay in the point, um, London to a brick that uh, Gobbert Sober is going to hand her a point um, with an error. And that's exactly what happened on that uh, point in the service game uh, where Glosman uh, wrapped up that um, uh, wrapped up that game uh, to uh, draw level at five all in the second set. And an amazing stat here that Gobbert Sova in the second set uh, is 72% uh, of her first serves in. She is winning those points and uh, she is way ahead of Glosman who's only winning um, 60 63%. Oh, they've changed the stat there. <laughs> it's one of these annoying websites that changes in front of your eyes. Anyway, uh, 27 winners to 16, um, where uh, Gobbert Sova is leading the American in t uh, 27 to 16 winners. But she's being she's undoing all her good work uh, with all these unforced errors. And net points won. Uh, Glosman ahead uh, with 64%. Uh, of winning points at the net compared to 57. Well, that's fairly even, actually. Um, as uh, Gobbert Sova looking to uh, serve out to go to a 6-5 lead, and she is up 30-15 at the moment, but another unforced error, this time a backhand volley um, to give a point to uh, Glosman, who will like her chances here, because I do too. Um, let us know what you think in the stats. Uh, in the in the in the chat here, um, join the conversation. Let us know what you think about um, the outcome of this particular match. I think the Americans got the chops uh, to come back and even things up, win the second set, and go on and win this because uh, Gobbert Sova, for all her experience, there's just far too many errors here for my liking. So um, let's uh, see how this plays out in the stats overall for the match. That um, Gobbert Sova has made 14 unforced errors in this match compared to 14 for the American. So I would have thought there'd be more than that, but um, yeah, um, I like the chances of uh, Glosman here. She's just uh, got it back to 30 all in this service game, and Gobbert Sova serving at around about 74 miles per hour at the moment. So that must be a second serve. This match uh, has been going for an hour and 18 minutes. This is the second live match we've featured this morning uh, on this Australian Open Live. Um, and we'll be back tomorrow covering uh, the men's uh, qualifying on day three. And on day four, uh, we aim to come back with coverage of the women again. So plenty to look forward to. And just in case you were wondering, yes, we will be covering the first two days of the uh, opening rounds of uh, uh, the uh, US Open in New York. And um, as it goes to juice in this game, because guess what? Surprise, surprise. Another unforced error, this time on the forehand from Gobbert Sova, we're at juice. And this is a big chance for Glosman to break through and put some pressure on the serve of um, the, the Belarusian. 
and uh, and go forward to get an advantage and take this um, take this to a 6-5 lead and break the serve of Gobbet Sova. So uh, I like the chances here, but um, Gobbet Sova um, goes to advantage with a forehand smash winner. And um, yeah, that's her 29th winner in this second set. So um, pretty mercurial play um, from Gobbet Sova, running pretty hot and cold. Um, she sends down a serve at 87 miles per hour, um, and she's done it. She's gone to a 6-5 lead. So Glosman um, gave a good of a, a good account of herself in that game as uh, Gobbet Sova goes out to a 6-5 lead. So uh, Glosman will be wanting um, to uh, draw level at 6 all and take it to a tie break. And I'd be, um, I'm fairly confident she'll do that. Um, she's been looking very, very uh, settled on her serves, uh, the American. And what have I done here? There we go. Sometimes the only way to learn your, your way around these websites is to actually cr click the wrong link. Um, we're just going to leave it on the live score here for you. I'll just refresh the screen. Uh, I'll just refresh the screen so that we're all um, confident <laughs> we've got the right information in front of us. As that refreshes for you, and you can see this match on court seven between Glosman, Valerie Glosman, the American, and Olga Govitsova, the Belarusian. Uh, this match has been going one hour and 21 minutes. Uh, the players are currently on a change of ends, having a break, which accounts for the slight delay. Um, and uh, we've got um, uh, coming up after the, the completion of this set, we'll be taking... Uh, a break of about three minutes and when we come back from that break we'll go through another round of completed matches and just just see if we can spot any upsets um, uh, in the games for the women today at uh, the US Open this is uh, day two of qualifying but uh, mostly still the first round to get through to the main draw uh, these players have to win three qualifying matches in a row um, some of these players have wild cards into the qualifying rounds and there'll also be players that have been given a main draw entry as a wild card uh, to the US Open uh, Grand Slam in New York. It's about 21 minutes past seven in New York, and it's uh, still a very pleasant 23 degrees. So let us know in the chat um, uh, if you've got any thoughts or feedback or insights, uh, because we certainly don't claim to be um, <laughs> the be-all and the end-all. We don't know everything here. In fact, we learn a lot. Um, from the contributions of our audience. And speaking of contributions, uh, Gobbet Sova is uh, started extremely well, um, racing out to a 30-love lead on her serve. She's serving for the match. She won the first set 6-4. But um, <laughs> surprise, surprise, she's made another unforced error on her backhand. Glosman says, thank you very much. And she'll be looking to go from 15.30 to bring it back to 30 all. As another serve goes down by Govitz at 82 miles per hour. Glosman still in still in the point there. Um, I'm tipping she'll break the serve here of Govitz over. I see, I see um, Glosman winning a tiebreaker here in the second set. And I think she's got the chops to do it. She might be ranked 922 in the world uh, up against a player who's... Been on the WTA tour for 21 years, <laughs> since 2001. Um, so clearly she's uh, uh, seen a few different players go through the locker room uh, in her time. And uh, we, the match that we covered earlier was um, uh, Vera's runner Ava, who I think, I'm pretty sure, has won in straight sets against the Australian. From Melbourne, Australia, thank you very much, Jamie Fawless. As um, on serve, Glosman, oh, that was a bit nervous. She went down 15.40 on serve. Uh, she's serving to stay in the match, uh, but she uh, she won that last point. Uh, that was a break point opportunity, but uh, Glosman, nerves of steel to smash a forehand winner to bring it back to 30.40. Well done, Valerie. Um, and we'll just keep this... Um, We'll just keep this 
I'll just keep this music going in the background just to keep things interesting. And she's done it. Glosman uh, has come back to juice uh, because Gobbert Sur uh, Sober uh, has made a backhand unforced error. So Glosman uh, should be able to go to advantage and then um, uh, win the next two points to draw level at six all and go to a tie break. I can't see any other um, outcome uh, for this second set because uh, Glosman, uh, she might be in the early stages of a very young professional uh, um pro tour tennis career on the WTA tour but I like her style and she she must have heard me because uh, she's won the next service point and gone to advantage and she's serving to win to draw level and go to a tiebreaker which is great for us and great for our audience because the tiebreakers there you go she's done it she's done it in quick time um, where Gobbert Sober handed her two points in a row with uh, forced errors on her backhand and forehand. So uh, this match um, uh, looks like going to a third set because uh, I'm tipping Glosman to uh, win the tiebreaker and we'll follow that um, point by point. So um, we're gonna leave it on the screen there for you, um, the uh, the live score there for the women, uh, the women's qualifying singles, the first round. Um, I'll just refresh the screen for you uh, to make sure that we're all up to date. Uh, browser live score refresh. Yes, there's just one click after another. <laughs> and um, it'll be uh, Valerie Glosman serving first in the tiebreaker and she wants to get off to a good start here. It's really important. Um, and she clearly has a great tennis brain. She's won that first point. She leads one love in the tiebreak of the second set. Uh, this match has been going for an hour and 27 minutes. And she has cracked the serve, the first serve in the tiebreak of uh, Govet Sova. Glosman now leads two love in the tiebreaker for the second set. Uh, Govet Sova sent down a, a serve at 92 miles per hour. But uh, Glosman hit a forehand winner. And uh, I like her chances of going to a three love lead here. So let's see what uh, Gobbert Sova serves up. And uh, she's serving well, Gobbert Sova. She's uh, leading the stats there. But the unforced errors on the, uh, on the forehand and the backhand, the unforced errors and the forced errors are, uh, are really holding her back from uh, wrapping this match up. So uh, Glosman hits a, um, an unforced error on her forehand. Um, and that's um, uh, the serve now going back to Glosman. And uh, she will serve at 2-1, leading 2-1 in the um, uh, tiebreaker for the second set. And I like her chances here, serving at 74 miles per hour. So on a second serve, uh, she's lost that point, uh, Glosman, uh, because Gobbert Sova uh, is back <laughs> She's back on point, um, winning that point with a backhand winner. Haven't seen too many backhand winners from either player uh, in this set, actually. Uh, and Gobbert Sova now serving her second serve in this particular set of serves. Um, and then after this point, it'll, uh, the serve will go back for two serves in a row for Glosman. Um, two all in the tiebreaker of the second set. Govet Sova sends down at 71 miles per hour. Uh, most like a second serve and uh, Glosman breaks and uh, goes ahead 3-2. She has two serves uh, here. Now this particular tiebreaker, um, oh, now I was just about to say it's not a super tiebreaker, um, but I might have to, uh, <laughs> I just might have to uh, hold, hold my, um, Hold my thoughts there, because um, I just lost. I just want to start this music up again. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> Excuse me. While uh, Glosman goes out to a 4-2 lead on serve in the tiebreaker, and uh, as the uh, 
that was a very slow serve at 62 miles per hour. We saw um, earlier um, in the match uh, between uh, Zronareva and Fawless that Zronareva, Vera Zronareva at 38 years of age was sending down uh, serves at 101 miles per hour. So uh, Glosman uh, serving at 62 miles per hour, maybe that's a tactic uh, just to uh, try and get uh, Govitz sober to be hitting uh, more forcefully or harder uh, than she should be, uh, just trying to encourage those uh, unforced errors on the forehand and the backhand. So the ball currently in play on the serve of Glosman in the tiebreaker. Now, I'm not sure whether this tiebreaker is uh, um, going to six points uh, where you uh, uh, the player would win two points clear by getting to six points. I don't know whether it's going to a super tiebreaker, the first to ten points. Uh, so apologies there that I haven't got my facts straight. We'll um, uh, work that out as we go along. And uh, Glosman's won two points in a row on a serve, and she goes to a 5-2 lead in the tiebreak. Um, and I'm, I'm predicting, I'm confident that Glosman will um, uh, win this uh, tiebreaker. She's now got her uh, uh, winners um, in the second set up to 20, but she's way behind Govitsova, who's hit 31 winners in this set. Uh, but it all counts for nothing, really, because uh, Govitsova is uh, sending the ball flying everywhere outside of the lines. Uh, she's on serve here, and Glosman goes to a 5-3 lead in the tie break as another error, uh, this time on the forehand, and it was a forced error. So Glosman uh, doing really well here, um, putting pressure on uh, the serve and also uh, just the general gameplay of Govitsova, um, who is clearly, um, uh, clearly on paper, you would think, uh, would be all over uh, this inexperienced player from America. And I apologise that I can't tell you where Valerie Glosman is from in America because her profile's on the WTA Tour website and the ITF Tour website. Uh, the information is very uh, sparse. So um, uh, Gobbert Sober manages uh, to win a point with a forehand volley. She went up to the net, but she trails 4-5 uh, in the tiebreaker. As uh, Glosman, um, depending on uh, which scoring system is being used in this second set tiebreaker, uh, she wins that point on her first serve, uh, leads 6-4 um, at 6-all uh, in the second set. Glosman losing the first set 4-6. So the match continuing. So obviously they are going to uh, a super tiebreaker possibly. Or maybe she might win with this next serve. Uh, let's just hold our breath. And she's lost that uh, service point where Govitsova has gone back. <laughs> she's like Jekyll and Hyde. She's hit a forehand winner and uh, won that point off the serve of Glosman, uh, who still leads 6-5. But she's got to face down two serves. And uh, Govitsova serving extremely well. That she's won 69% of points on her, on her first serves that go in. Whereas Glosman not trailing that far behind. Oh, that's her. Yeah, the percentage of wins on her first serve going in. But Glosman is winning 69% of the first serves that go in. So uh, it's it's fairly even, and that's it. The uh, the second set is over. It was the first to six points, and then winning the next um, point. So um, uh, Gobertsova um, uh, sent down a um, uh, a serve, which uh, Glosman coped with uh, quite well, and uh, won uh, won the point on the serve of uh, Gobertsova. Valerie Glosman, well done. She has uh, evened up the match. She is still in it uh, with more than more than a, a chance. I would I'd tip her to go on and win this match because uh, uh, she went down four six in the first set, but she's won the second set seven six, and she won the tiebreaker seven points to five against one of the most experienced players you could ever hope to come up against with. And let's not forget that v Valerie Glosman, the American, playing in front of her home crowd, so no doubt that uh, the support in the crowd, from the crowd, uh, has to have been 
a very, very significant factor. Well done, Valerie Glosman. So that's where we will leave this um, uh, match for the time being. Um, so the format from here, uh, we're still going to keep going. We've uh, had a, uh, been running two hours at the moment. Uh, let's just uh, <laughs> switch up gears. And every time you um, hear that uh, hear that uh, little interlude, that's just signifying that uh, we're just uh, switching topics. So just to bring you up to date with uh, how things are going to pan out from here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, <coughs> uh, from here, <laughs> as I choke on my own words. From here, we'll be taking a, uh, a break of about three minutes, three to four minutes. And uh, when we come back, uh, when we come back, we're going to, um, I'm just going to refresh the screen here uh, for you for that uh, live score. When we come back, we're going to go through another set of uh, completed matches. Uh, I might go through um, uh, 12 this time instead of six. Um, but uh, our coverage today will be around about three or four hours into uh, the late morning here in uh, Melbourne, Australia, uh, where Wise Words Media is based uh, in our luxurious production studios. Yesterday, we covered the, uh, the first round of qualifying on day one for the men. And today, it's the women. Tomorrow, we'll be back. Uh, we're alternating and going back to covering... Uh, uh, men's qualifying singles uh, probably be uh, going into the second round there and uh, provided we don't sleep in on Saturday uh, we'll be back with the women on Saturday and uh, for those of you that um, are enjoying this uh, audio only radio style coverage we will be back for the first two days of uh, the US Open um, and uh, covering those um, slew of matches across all those courts because that's where the gold is, the tears, the tantrums, the, uh, the upsets, the joys, the victories and uh, those coming out of qualifying or entering the main draw with a wild card who, uh, who make their name in front of those huge, massive New York crowds. Um, but uh, the US Open there um, in... Uh, uh, I think it's um, Flushing Meadows. I think they've named it um, Billie Jean, Billie Jean <laughs> National Tennis Centre, I think. And the finals played on Arthur Ashe Stadium Court, Centre Court. So um, there's a lot to look forward to. So don't go away. As we like to say in the classics, we will be right back.
here tonight for this very special uh, Queen Victoria Market Night Market, which is all about welcoming our international students. All students over the last three years, and we've also been so grateful to those who stayed for persisting and showing so much resilience. Our latest stats show that there are 138,000 international students back in Victoria, which is 92% of pre-pandemic levels. Because international students aren't just valuable on our campuses and in our tertiary institutions, they're fantastic customers and consumers. They're wonderful participants and volunteers, workers in our local businesses particularly, and this is about setting up relationships for the long term. If you are an international student, could you please put your hand up? stories and our story is tennis g'day 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 welcome 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 you're here you made it if you're just joining us where have you been you're listening to the bloke who walks this is the u.s open qualifying singles coverage day two produced by wise words media this australian open life we tell stories and our story of tennis and uh we're very pleased to be able to um, have your company. And uh, as we go into this next segment, uh, we uh, on the screen, we'll just keep uh, the, the score up there for you, the match between Glosman and Gobbert Sober. If you've uh, just joined us, we've just spent, um, uh, we've just spent a very pleasant, um, a very pleasant uh, period of time covering that match. Uh, the second set, Glosman uh, coming back to level the match at one set all, winning the second set tiebreaker, 7-6, seven, 7 points to 5 in the tiebreaker. But uh, what we're going to do in this particular um, segment of uh, this Australian Open life, we're just going to go through some of the uh, completed matches for the women's qualifying singles on day two. Um, in New York, where it's uh, just ticking around to 7.44 in the evening. Uh, it's 23 degrees uh, in New York at the moment. Very pleasant conditions for uh, 
sitting outside with a hot dog and a donut and a New York minute. <laughs> so uh, let's take a look at uh, some of the completed matches for the women uh, as things stand. Um, we've already looked at uh, the first six matches, so let's let's take a bit of a longer look um, at um, the next. Um, we'll take a look at six matches. We'll take a very very short break, and then we'll come back and look at another six. And we're uh, we're going to stick around uh, for the rest of the morning here, local time in Melbourne, Australia, and we'll just um, we'll we'll look at another live match and follow um, a, a full set through to its conclusion so uh, there's plenty for everyone um, uh, to enjoy if you're a tennis fan and especially if you're a tennis fan who's uh, looking for hungering uh, <laughs> craving unique content that uh, you can't find anywhere else let us do all the hard work for you because it's our bread and butter to bring you content with a difference dynamic interactive innovative content um, we cover all the Grand Slams around the world and naturally our, our uh, bread and butter is uh, the Australian Open at Melbourne Park. We released our new teaser yesterday for the 2024 Australian Open, uh, the Grand Slam there, um, uh, which will kick off in the middle of January next year and uh, we can't wait for that. Uh, we've got some big plans which we will tell you about maybe um, at the end of our uh, broadcast today, but definitely uh, we'll be um, letting you know through uh, some uh, some content uh, there. We'll release that as we go. So uh, let's stop talking and start doing. And uh, that's just um, a little circuit breaker <laughs> to remind me to shut up and get on with it. So let's take a look at um, six completed women's matches so far on day two. Um, and let's run through and head out uh, to court seven. And uh, I can see um, the British player, Yuki Miyazaki. My goodness, um, she's done well. She's won her opening match there in just over an hour. She's defeated the Ukrainian, who is also um, the, uh, the 23rd seed this year at the US Open Women's Qualifying, uh, Sneger. Uh, but uh, Miyazaki, who performed so well at Wimbledon this year um, in front of her home crowd, uh, she won that match 6-3, 6-2. So she is obviously on fire. And I apologize for this continual <laughs> interruption to the narrative, adjusting my studio chair, uh, which I should not have bought from the cheapest outlet on the planet. Uh, moving on to the second game for the day uh, that was on court seven. Uh, it was the Japanese player, Sakasumi, uh, defeating uh, the Belgian player, Benoit, 6-4, uh, 7-6 in the tiebreaker, just on the two hour mark. Uh, and she absolutely <laughs> belted it everywhere around the court in that second set tiebreaker, winning seven points to love. Uh, Olivia Gadecki, the Australian, fantastic result for Olivia. Um, she's featured in a few qualifying uh, rounds at various Grand Slams over the last couple of years. Fantastic result for her on court eight, winning her first, uh, first round women's qualifying singles match um, at Flushing Meadow on court eight. Uh, she went through in straight sets, 6-3, and powered home in the second, 6-1, defeating uh, uh, from France, uh, Tan, who also performed well at Wimbledon, actually, uh, uh, by the by. And another fantastic result for Australia uh, in the second match on court eight uh, today, but uh, taking two hours and 35 minutes over three sets, it was Priscilla Hon, who is a, uh, a very uh, uh, well-known and established uh, player now on the WTA Tour. Uh, she got over Danilovic, um, the 11th seed. Priscilla Hon, unseeded. Great result for her. Great reward. Uh, a really hard worker. Um, and uh, a typical of the type of player we like to follow. Not because she's Australian, that's just a bonus. No, one of those players that uh, makes up the uh, professional tennis community, works her ass off, winning 5-7, 6-1, 7-6, 7-6, 7-6, 7-6, 7-6, 7-6, 7-6, 7-6, 7-6, 7-6, 7-6, 7-6, 7-6, 7-6,
6-4-6-1. That is a great result, a great turnaround for Priscilla Hon. She'll be thrilled with that, as are we. The uh, the next match on court nine, uh, that was over in <laughs> that was over in quick time, just over 50 minutes for uh, the French woman Jacques Ormol, uh defeating Sepulova 6-2-6-2, and uh, the player from Greece. Uh, great to see one of one of the uh, the compatriots of Maria Sakari getting up on court nine. Grammar Takopoulou getting up over the Japanese player Kaji. Uh, no, she didn't. <laughs> I've got to read these scores properly. The Japanese player uh, triumphing in an hour and 29 minutes on court nine. 6-3, 6-3. Don't go away. We will be right back. Welcome back to This Australian Open Life. We tell stories, and our story is tennis, and the current stories that we are telling uh, for today's uh, day two qualifying at uh, the US Open, we're focusing on the WTA tour today. That's uh, the ladies. And didn't I just say a few minutes ago we released our new teaser yesterday? <laughs> I forgot to update the broadcast studio software and stick in the new teaser. Oh, well, that's something uh, to do tomorrow. Okay, so moving on quickly. Uh, moving on quickly. <laughs> moving on quickly. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the next set of six matches, six completed matches uh, that were played earlier uh, today, Melbourne and US time, where it is currently about 7.52 in the evening. And uh, the match on court nine completed in uh, quick time, 53 minutes. That so was the Chinese player Wang uh, up against Be uh, Bejlek. A straight sets donut <laughs> for the 15th seed. Six love, six love. She'll be... Um, She'll be, she won't be in the uh, the locker room getting a massage. She'll be back in her hotel room with her feet up in her um, in a bath in a in her um, bathrobe, dressing gown, looking at the results um, on this Australian Open life. So hello to you. Uh, court ten, uh, we had a Russian uh, uh, victorious over uh, the player from France. So uh, Savink. Uh, winning over Monet, 6-3, 6-3. Uh, the second match on court 10 was another uh, Russian, Serban. Uh, she lost in three sets to um, the Spanish player, the 22nd seed, getting up in three sets after losing uh, the first set. Uh, that was Parizas Diaz, the 22nd seed from uh, Spain. Three hours, uh, just shy of three hours this match. And uh, she was successful, 2-6-7-5-6-3. On court 11, uh, a match that was uh, an hour and four minutes. Uh, it was Zacharias uh, from Mexico playing, uh, oh, Elena Bectus from America, the 26th seed in qualifying. But uh, the Mexican going down, 2-6-1-6. Um, another American uh, victorious. The Yanks will be thrilled with uh, their homegrown players getting up. Uh, quite a few Americans getting up yesterday and today. It was uh, Kaliva uh, up against the, uh, the Russian Timofeeva. Um, 
7675. That first set tiebreaker, seven points to four for the American. Uh, so always uh, bodes well for some players, and especially the Americans playing in front of their home crowd. They will be wound up <laughs> nice and tight um, uh, with the support that they're getting. Uh, two hours and one minute um, out on court 11, that match. And the final, and it's a shame... It's a shame to see one of our favourite players who was the number one seed. Oh, this is heartbreaking. In a first round qualifying match on day two at Flushing Meadows in New York. Now Habino, who has featured many times on this Australian Open Life. Uh, she is the number one seed at uh, this year's uh, qualifying uh, for the US Open. But not anymore because she lost in two tight sets to the American Chirico. Uh, the American getting up 7-6 in a first set tiebreaker, 7 points to 3. And then uh, coming home with a wet sail, 6 games to 3 in the second set. That's a real shame on court 12, that outcome for uh, the Japanese player. She is a gun. So uh, that's all the completed matches we will look at uh, for the moment. Uh, because we're going to go looking for another live match after this break. And we'll bring you a third live full set from a live match and then we'll come back and we'll finish up uh, with the last uh, results of the completed matches there's nine uh, left to have a look at so we'll come back and do those don't go away we'll be right back after this short break this song is spring street We tell stories, and our story is tennis. G'day, welcome back to This Australian Open Life. Great to have your company uh, on uh, this uh, second day of um, qualifying singles at uh, the US Open. And uh, today we're focusing on the WTA Tour, and we've got another live match for you. And uh, we'll uh, just put it up here in, uh, in the browser. Uh, and we'll cross over to uh, the, the, the screen for the score. And um, where is it? <laughs> it's just, it's not me, it's the software. So uh, we'll just change this, um, this browser address and uh, we've got a treat for you. If you're a fan of American tennis, well look out because we are bringing you live from court 12, the match between uh, Lie uh, of America and the Spaniard Martinez Ceres and uh, this match has already been going for 22 minutes we're still in the first set and we're going to follow this uh, set through to its completion and then we'll take another break and we'll wrap up the coverage uh, with the final set of uh, nine completed matches maybe ten by the time we get there and um, and that'll wrap us up for the morning I'd say um, so uh, let's see uh, what's going on here on uh, court 12. So uh, you can follow along uh, with us with this live score. And uh, I apologize that I can't um, scroll down the screen here. And you can see that uh, you can see that uh, the Spaniard has jumped out to a 5-4 lead. So we're going to stick with this match uh, because if this um, 
if this first set goes uh, fairly quickly, we'll stay with the second set. Um, just, <laughs> just, we'll just stay flexible on our toes here, because uh, we want to bring you as much as much quality content as possible. Um, so I'm just going to put up um, for those of you um, who may want to watch this um, and keep track of the stats, um, which we can't do anyway. There's no stats for this match, um, unfortunately. Um, so uh, that's um, well, that's no problem because uh, we can um, we can work out how things are going for ourselves. Now I'm going to put in the chat uh, just some details about this match if you want to. Um, Follow this match yourselves. Um, I'm just going to throw this um, uh, link for the Slam Tracker from uh, the uh, the site here for the US Open. We'll put that in the chat. If you uh, want to follow that yourself, um, that's the URL there. And um, let us know if you've got any uh, questions or you want to join the conversation in the chat. You just need to be a subscriber for the grand total of 60 seconds. It'll just cost you 60 seconds of sitting around. But uh, we would love your feedback, love your insights, because it's amazing how much uh, tennis knowledge is uh, out there around the traps, um, and we like to be the conduit for it at this Australian Open Life, and it's, um, it's amazing how many times we get a question or, or a bit of feedback that then turns into uh, content that we can present to the wider audience. So don't be shy. Uh, give us uh, give us your thoughts on this match. Give us your thoughts on the U.S. Open. I mean, we we can extend the conversation out to uh, any of uh, the more um, uh, elite players on the circuit. But um, at this Australian Open life, we really enjoy shining a spotlight on and showcasing the lesser known players because. Um, uh, the uh, the margins are very thin at the top level between qualifying and uh, and the main draw. Uh, some of these players um, uh, uh, they fight so hard to travel around the world and, uh, and 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 build up their rankings points at various tournaments outside the Grand Slams and and uh, the um, uh, the showcase tournaments. Um, uh, like Indian Wells and, and down in Miami. So um, one thing that uh, this Australian Open life, we've found a niche. And also uh, we enjoy looking at the lesser known players and uh, educating our audience and uh, giving them a heads up about uh, the up and comers that uh, fall uh, outside the mainstream media, uh, the back pages of the, the papers or uh, the news reports. Um, or maybe uh, maybe you, you want to know more about these players, but you just don't quite know where to find them. Uh, well, that's our job. Let us do all the hard work for you. There's no point wasting your time uh, looking for apps and websites and this and that. The other, let us do all the hard work for you and uh, bring it all together in one easy-to-go-to place, which is uh, Wise Words Media's This Australian Open Life. We are the only independent media platform that brings this type of coverage to global audiences. So uh, let's get stuck into it and uh, and see what's going on on court 12. So uh, as we said, there's no stats uh, coverage for this match, unfortunately. So uh, we'll just have to um, uh, make it up as we go along. So we can see uh, the first set started um, uh, just over 20 minutes ago, and um, uh, uh, Anne Lee of um, California and uh, Carlotta Martinez Cires, uh, the Spanish player, who is ranked 219 in the world, and um, the American ranked 163 in the world. Uh, she's 23, and she was born in uh, Pennsylvania in a town called the King of Prussia. Oh boy, these Americans, they, uh, <laughs> they've got some really unusual ways of uh, describing um, <laughs> their, 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 their towns. Um, Anna Lee, Anne Lee, uh, she plays uh, right-handed. And um, let's just hear from Anne Lee, um, actually. So let's just turn the music down 
And let's just see uh, if we can um, get Anne Lee to uh, say good day to us. Stand by. And the um, <laughs> and the WTA tour profile does not have a uh, doesn't have a similar <laughs> audio variable there. So um, a bit of fun, a bit of interactive uh, fun on the browser there uh, on the WTA tour website. So uh, for those of you that are interested um, in these two players, let's uh, throw these uh, player profiles in the chat. Um, because uh, we're very happy to share this information um, with you. And during this um, first set, uh, as it goes along, we'll uh, delve into the backgrounds of these two players and, uh, and learn a bit more about them as um, the Spaniard uh, Martinez Cires goes to a 30-love lead. And I'm going to refresh the browser because I don't trust it. And I'll refresh it um, here for the audience as well. Make sure that we're all up to date. And it is five games all in the first set. And it is Anne Lee uh, serving. Um, so fairly evenly poised this first set. So um, we'll stick with this match uh, through into the second set. Um, because we've only just joined. And uh, there were six live matches um, underway, um, but uh, decided that um, this match uh, was probably going to offer the best value. And I'm getting distracted because at the Stars of the Open tournament, semi-final playing uh, mixed doubles on Louis Armstrong Stadium, which has just... It's been going eight minutes. It can't be going eight minutes. John McEnroe paired with Joanne Pakula. Joanne Pagula, up against Mario Berentini, the Italian, who is partnering Gabby Sabatini. <laughs> and that pairing of Sabatini and Berentini is trailing 5-8, and that's points, not games. They are trailing 5 points to 8 in the opening game of the first set. you got to love these... Um, you got to love these... Um, <laughs> these... These uh, senior tour uh, showcase matches, and uh, <laughs> I'm distracted. Hang on a second. That uh, that caught my attention, and I lost every bit of concentration that I've had since we started. Um, we started pretty early this morning, over uh, two and a half hours ago. If you're just joining us. Where have you been? <laughs> Where have you been? And I am happy to say that we have got stats. Um, we have got stats for this match have come back. And uh, if although I can't scroll down on the uh, the broadcast studio software here for you, I've put a link to the Slam Tracker for this match uh, in the uh, in the chat there, and you can access that uh, without being a subscriber. But uh, I'm going to put my hand up there, and uh, just before you click that link, I'm going to ask you to hit subscribe. Don't just like this presentation. Subscribe to This Australian Open Life, and um, that'll help um, the subscription, and um, that'll help us grow the channel and get this content out to a wider audience. So at 30 all and 5 all in the first set, I'd say that these two players are very evenly matched. And uh, they're not um, they're not worlds away from each other in the rankings. With uh, Anne Lee of um, uh, Pennsylvania um, up against uh, the uh, the Spanish player um, Carlotta Martinez Cruz, um, only about a hundred rankings points separates these two players. And um, so let's um, while this um, uh, that game just uh, concluded, where um, Martinez Cires lost the game. Um, trying to break the serve of Anne Lee, but she lost that with a, a forced error on her forehand as Anne Lee takes a 6-5 lead in the first set. Um, as we settle into uh, uh, covering this match, we'll take a look at the backgrounds of uh, each of these players and uh, and then we'll also take a look at um, 
uh, the lead-up tournaments that they've participated in since Wimbledon uh, coming into these uh, qualifying singles matches that are uh, continuing here on day two at the US Open. And uh, if we've got any time left, uh, we'll, we'll go into a few um, stats buried in their player profile. So there's plenty to look forward to. So, um, and Lee currently um, receiving on serve uh, is Martinez Ceres. Um, this match has been going um, about 50 minutes. Uh, the players are just having a change of ends. Uh, the American will be looking to break the serve of uh, Carlotta Martinez Ceres and take a take a, a one set to love lead, but uh, she can't um, afford to think too far ahead like um, like us. She has to get the job done and uh, she must concentrate because she's just lost the first point on the serve of Martinez Ceres leading now 15 love on serve, but trailing 5-6 in the first set. So um, we'll just follow this game through. We'll just um, calmly follow this through. Net points won, uh, 100% to 83. The American trailing the Spaniard, um, but the American um, is far more comfortable at the net, uh, which is nice to see, actually, because the Americans um, uh, mainly play on... Uh, and grow up on hard courts, and um, uh, uh, Anne Lee has been to the net um, uh, six times already, and won, uh, won nearly all of them, whereas uh, Martinez Ceres, uh, you know, obviously growing up on clay, specialising in clay, preferring clay, uh, has only been to the net once and won that point. Uh, the wins percentage on second serve, Martinez Ceres, at 65%, the American uh, only uh, winning 50% of her second serves, uh, so she needs to up her game there. Um, but uh, I'd, I'd say she's not too worried since she's leading 6-5, but she's about to um, lose this game. She's uh, nowhere. <laughs> she's not even in the ballpark. She's trailing Love 40 on the serve of Martinez Ceres. Uh, as I'll just refresh this uh, here. <laughs> it's just got so many things within this um, browser and this uh, dashboard. And um, coming back to uh, the live score, and that is now six games all. Well done to Carlotta Martinez. Uh, she calmly goes straight through that game to love and draws level at six all in the first set. And uh, that will now go to a tie break. So as the players uh, take their places, it'll be Ann Lee, the American. She will uh, serve first and she'll have one serve and she sends it down at 96 miles per hour. She's no slouch on the serve. That is a very healthy speed, but uh, she's got now the second serve, um, uh, 74 miles per hour. She plays it fairly safe, um, and uh, this ball currently in play, uh, the 12th game of the first set, and she's won that um, after Martinez Ceres uh, has a uh, unforced error on her backhand. So um, we saw in the previous uh, live coverage of the game uh, between... Um, uh, who was it between? <laughs> Someone help me out. I'm going to have to go to the chat. It was uh, Glosman, Valerie Glosman, playing uh, uh, Olga Govitsova, and uh, a lot of unforced errors in that match, all coming from the racket of uh, the Belarusian uh, Govitsova. So hopefully um, Martinez Ceres uh, will not uh, suffer similar um, uh, failings on her forehand and backhand, and she has uh, uh, won her first service point in this tiebreak, and it's currently one all um, in the uh, the tiebreaker of the first set. But maybe what we might do is we will um, we will. Uh, I'm just tossing up. We've been going. Um, We've been going two hours. Yeah, we can go another hour. We can follow this through, no problem. As Anne Lee 
breaks the serve of Martinez Sires. She now leads 2-1 in the tie break and has two serves uh, to advantage to uh, try and break clear and establish a pretty unassailable lead in this tiebreaker. She sends down a serve at 102 miles per hour. Nice work. And I'm tipping that this ball currently in play will end up being won uh, this point by Ann Lee. The match about to... Uh, yeah, she's won that. She's leading 3-1 um, on serve and has another serve to come. Martinez Sires, uh, currently ranked 219 in the world. And Lee, an extremely respect, res, receptacle, <laughs> respectable 163 in the world. Um, plays right-handed. Um, no player stats um, uh, at the moment. It's all blanks on uh, Carlotta's uh, WTO profile, but that's all right. We'll find it eventually. And the live score, yep. And Lee confidently wins both of her service points um, to go out to um, a 4-1 lead in the tiebreaker of this first set. Serving at 85 miles per hour. She must have put a bit of spin on that, uh, the Spaniard. Um, and she has to win both of these points because uh, it'll be the first to six, uh, the first to seven points in this first set tiebreaker uh, will decide this first set. So the ball currently in play, uh, Martinez Sires serving. And she's lost that point. Uh, and Lee goes to a 5-1 lead. And um, the pressure all over Martinez Sires. And don't forget that um, she is playing in front of a hostile New York crowd. They will be uh, roaring home every single American playing playing uh, in front of them uh, in these qualifiers. And um, <laughs> they are not shy, the Americans, in, uh, in they, they support. The support for the tennis um, is often just as loud, just as raucous, and just as in your face as any gridiron match or baseball <laughs> game. Um, so you got to be, you got to try and shut all that out uh, Carlotta has to try and shut all that out, and uh, she's getting shut out. And Lee breaks both service points off the racket of Carlotta Martinez Sires. Uh, and um, I'm getting distracted because I just want to keep this silly samba music going, <laughs> just to keep you all interested. And 6 1 is the lead in the tie break to Anne Lee. She's got two opportunities, and she only needs one. She takes out the first set. Seven points to one in the first set tiebreaker. She will be chuffed. I uh, can hear the crowd going off um, by rote. <laughs> I've watched so many crowds uh, um, watching US Open matches. I can imagine quite easily what the sound of the crowd is like at the moment, cheering their homegrown hero, Ann Lee of Pennsylvania, uh, who plays right-handed. She is ranked 163 in the world. She has just taken the first set against her Spanish opponent, ranked 219 in the world. Uh, that is Carlotta Martinez Sires. And um, we will stay with this match. Uh, we'll watch the, uh, the second set for this match and uh, see it through... Um, See if Ann Lee can uh, finish it off in straight sets. But uh, whatever the result, after the, uh, the second set of this match, we will um, take a, another short break and um, we will, um, uh, we will um, come back and see what the completed matches are um, for the women's uh, qualifying singles. And it's day two, don't forget, uh, in New York. And... Um, once I sort out this, um, once I sort this out, once I sort this out, which I've just done, don't go away, we'll be right back.
we tell stories and our story is tennis. And when I said to you that we released our new trailer yesterday for the 2024 Australian Open, I wasn't telling a story. No, that is live. That was released yesterday and we've updated our uh, broadcast studio software and uh, should have been on that straight away this morning. But anyway, uh, we are currently um, we are currently live, live coverage, audio only radio style coverage from this Australian Open Life, produced by Wise Words Media. We are live in Melbourne, Australia, where it is currently about 20 past 10 uh, on a very brisk yet very sunny and pleasant uh, late winter's morning compared to a very sunny 23 degrees at around about 8.20 in uh, New York. Um, they're on their Wednesday evening. We're on our Thursday morning, and we are following the match between Anne Lee of Pennsylvania, America, who's just taken out the first set tiebreaker. And her opponent is the 22-year-old Carlotta Martinez Ceres. So um, while we follow this match live, and uh, we've got the score there uh, live on screen for you, uh, that interactive uh, live dynamic screen, you can see that uh, Carlotta Martinez Ceres uh, is serving and we'll just refresh the browser for you and uh, that way you know that uh, you don't have to depend on me telling you what's going on you can see it for yourself um, coming back strongly with uh, her first service game in the second set uh, Carlotta Martinez Ceres is leading 30-15 uh, and um, she's serving very strongly and very um, reliably and uh, that uh, first set uh, she just um, she she just um, possibly tightened up. Uh, we don't have rights to broadcast footage here, so um, but I'm assuming because she lost seven points to one in that tiebreaker, I'm assuming that uh, Anne Lee enjoyed the full raucous um, vocal support of that uh, those outrageous <laughs> in-your-face American tennis fans um, who enjoy their sport. To the hilt. So let's, um, while this live score is uh, tracking there for you on the screen, and I've also dumped uh, in the chat the URL for the live tracker for anyone who wants to um, uh, see for themselves the stats and the point by point coverage, which we're also uh, uh, broadcasting. Let's take a look at uh, the ITF and WTA Tour profile for Carlotta Martinez Ceres. She is 22. A right-handed player, and surprise, surprise, her preferred and favourite service surface is clay. And uh, on her um, WTA Tour profile, uh, we don't have a bio, unfortunately. Uh, I just wanted to double check that, so I'll just go back to her ITF profile because there's a little bit of interesting uh, information here, as. Uh, um, uh, and Lee uh, draws to juice to break an opportunity to break the uh, the service game of uh, the Spaniard, so she'll want to get to advantage there. And Lee, um, but um, the she's just embarking um, on her uh, on her professional career. Um, uh, Carlotta Martinez series um, overall a professional win loss record, which. Uh, includes ITF, WTA, and Billie Jean King Cup uh, results. She's got a 68% win rate. That's pretty respectable. And uh, a lot of those wins are uh, coming on clay, which is no surprise. Um, she's been playing on the professional tour since um, 2018 when she she started with a ranking of um, um, 1,019, which dropped down to 1,217 um, uh, the following year. But uh, coming out of uh, everything uh, that affected the whole world with COVID, she went from a ranking of 1,017 and quickly was down into the 500s. And last year was 311 in the world um, and now uh, is back to uh, into the low 200s. She um, has uh, gone uh, a little bit outwards in her rankings, um, but no doubt will um, will power on into uh, around the top 100, hopefully. She's only 22, so she's doing uh, very well and uh, now competing internationally as well. Um, and I'd expect her to um, 
this this experience you couldn't get better experience than uh, playing qualifying uh, in America in New York in front of those crowds. And let's not forget the Spaniards um, when when they host well when they used to host the Davis Cup because that format changed. Um, thank you very much to whoever did that. But uh, Spaniards, um, those crowds get very raucous themselves um, at Davis Cup ties. So um, anyway, the, 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 the shoes on the other, <laughs> the tennis shoe is on the other foot um, at the moment for Carlotta uh, martinez Cires, And she is currently at Juice uh, in the first game after that, uh, after that tie break of the first set. And and Lee uh, is uh, is putting a lot of pressure on her. So uh, and Lee has uh, had two opportunities um, uh, to uh, break the service game of the Spaniard here. And this point currently in play, the Spaniard serving to uh, try and get an advantage, but she's lost that point, and that game is finished. Is it? No, it's still going where uh, it's advantage to the American because uh, Carlotta Martinez Cires has lost that uh, point, giving advantage to the American. It was a forehand unforced error. So um, she'd be looking uh, to win this opening game just to uh, keep things on track and put that uh, tiebreak loss well behind her and out of her mind, but uh, no, her serve has been broken. So not a great start to the second set for the Spaniard. She was serving fairly well, but that says a lot about the uh, the character and the mentality, but also the hometown advantage for Anne Lee, uh, the American from Pennsylvania. And while she serves, let's take a look at uh, her background uh, and profile. That uh, She's 23 years of age and she's coked She's coached by Henna Nailers, who, uh, um, and she lives and trains in Atlanta. Um, and having moved from uh, USTA in, in Orlando, she idolizes Roger Federer. Well, take a number, <laughs> don't we all? What a, what a fantastic champion and great, great um, ambassador for professional tennis, uh, old Roger. And I still can't get over the fact that uh, his first Grand Slam win was at the Australian Open and where he beat Leighton Hewitt. And that was the start of Roger Federer's dominance. <laughs> I'll never forget that match. Leighton Hewitt was uh, the number one at the time and had been for a couple of years. But uh, yeah, why not? If you're gonna idolize someone, might as well be Roger Federer. What a player. And uh, Anne Lee's favorite service surface to compete on is grass as she goes out to a 15 to love lead on serve in her first service game of the second set and uh, loses the next service point. Uh, so it's 15 all. Uh, Anne Lee uh, has a couple of hobbies, music, watching movies and reading. I'll have to tell her not to bother seeing Mission Impossible, the last film I saw it yesterday or the day before. Uh, didn't thrill me to be honest. Uh, I'll tell you why uh, some other time. And uh, Anne Lee's uh, got a couple of singles uh, highlights already. She won the 2021 tournament in Tenerife, and she was also a finalist in the same year at the Grampians Trophy. Now, the Grampians Trophy, the Grampians, that can't be the Grampians in uh, Victoria here in Australia. That's, uh, local, uh, that's local territory to me. That is. <laughs> it's in Melbourne. The Grampians Trophy, so I'm so sorry, I've got to go through this because I had no idea that there was a WTA Tour tournament uh, in the Grampians just outside Melbourne. Uh, it was a 2021 WTA Tour. It was played on the outdoor hard courts in Melbourne, Australia. And it was one of the tournaments organised as a lead-up tournament to the Australian Open that year because um, the Australian Open was uh, really struggling uh, to get going, of course, because of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And it was created for players who had originally intended to participate in the 2021 Yarra Valley Classic, also known as the Gippsland Trophy. But they were forced to undergo, of course, we all know the story, uh, so I won't re rehash what we know there. It was, uh, that was actually uh, the, 2020, uh, the 2021 tournament 
was actually uh, the debut of this Australian Open life, and uh, we've been going strong ever since. So uh, you'll see on your screen the live scores that Anne Lee uh, has uh, powered through to win her opening second, uh, her opening service game of the second set. She's now leading two love. Martinez Ceres uh, has her work cut out for her, um, but she's not in danger just yet as she serves at 92 miles an hour. That's a pretty respectable um, uh, effort. And um, heading into uh, the second hour of this match, Martinez Ceres uh, wins her first point thanks to a forced error on the forehand from Ann Lee. So good work from the Spaniard, uh, putting the American under pressure there, uh, that she was unable to uh, return that point. But going back to uh, the profile uh, of Ann Lee, um, she's been playing professionally uh, since 2016. She played the first events of her career on the ITF circuit in the US. And uh, she first went to the US Open as a wild card uh, in qualifying, she was given a wild card qualifying spot at uh, the US Open, but she didn't uh, make it through qualifying at the US Open that year. But she did win her first singles title in 2017 on the ITF circuit. And um, she's actually um, uh, had three, three goes um, at qualifying, including the US Open um, in 2018, this is, and she uh, lost all three times at the attempt. And uh, in 2019, she had uh, uh, two attempts, unsuccessful attempts in qualifying at Wimbledon US Open, but she was able to uh, win a singles title on the ITF circuit. So, and Lee uh, at 23, coming into this qualifying uh, first round on day two at the US Open, uh, has a lot of experience. So uh, those losses uh, will be far from a, uh, a negative, I would say, for her. Um, and uh, she uh, that'll hold her in good stead. So it's not surprising. When you look at that experience over the last uh, five to six years for this, uh, for this young lady, um, no surprise that uh, she um, uh, had the nerves of steel, backed up by that New York crowd, going through seven points to one in the first set tiebreak. She leads two love in the second set. And it's now 30 all on serve. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We tell stories, and our story is tennis. G'day, welcome back to This Australian Open Life, our live coverage, uh, audio-only, radio-style uh, coverage of uh, day two of uh, women's qualifying today at uh, Flushing Meadow, New York. Um, uh, the qualifying rounds, um, New York, uh, just ticking around uh, just past 8.30 there in the evening, 23 degrees and sunny, as the sun sets in New York, uh, where no doubt the crowds are uh, raucously cheering on and encouraging uh, their homegrown talent, Anne Lee, who is currently in her first round women's qualifying singles match against uh, Carlotta Martinez Ceres, the Spaniard, uh, who is serving, uh, had an opportunity to, uh, to go through uh, to uh, register her first um, um, first um, game of the second set, 
but uh, although she had advantage on serve, uh, she lost that point to the American with a uh, unforced error on her forehand. And now it's back at juice. And um, just waiting to see um, uh, what transpires on the next serve uh, for uh, the Spaniard. And she's uh, successfully taken out the next point with a backhand winner. Well done, Carlotta. And the net points, one, have swung right around. Um, uh, and Lee at 75%, winning 75% of her net points. Martinez, uh, she's attempting to get to the net, but, um, yeah, not doing too shabbily, actually. She's won 60% of her net points um, attempted, so well done um, on the hard court in uh, um, uh, Billie Jean King Stadium, I think it's called now, the national uh, stadium uh, where the US Open is held. And uh, Martinez here is uh, looking to take out this service game and uh, get something on the board here. She wants to be careful, and she is careful. She wins that point. She um, manages to um, uh, hold back the tide of the momentum that uh, Anne Lee is uh, experiencing at the moment. Um, so now it's 2-1 uh, in the second set in favour of the Americans. So let's take a look at the lead-up tournaments, uh, these players um, into the US Open since Wimbledon. And uh, Carlotta Ceres, um, uh, Carlotta Martinez Ceres, uh, she's been really putting in the hard yards um, over the last few months. So let's, let's take some time to review that and some quite good results too. So um, uh, the first tournament of the US uh, hardcourt season, She's uh, uh, gone out to Central America, in fact, uh, Santo Domingo uh, in the Dominican Republic, and that was played in um, uh, July. She uh, had a bye in the round of uh, 64, and then she came up against um, uh, Sebastiani Leon of uh, America, won that match 6 1 6 3. Uh, next was another American, Carolyn Ansari. Uh, 7563, uh, the victory there for the Spaniard. And in the quarterfinals, she faced an Argentinian, Martina Capuro Taborda, um, losing that quarterfinal 3 6 2 6. Uh, the score there with Anne Lee serving uh, to change of ends, uh, she has yet to step up and serve. So we'll go back to uh, these results and keep this um, <laughs> samba music going. Uh, just to keep it interesting, uh, let us know in the comments. Uh, how do you? Um, uh, what sort of uh, format presentation do you prefer at the moment? Do you prefer having the live score on screen, or would you rather some um, some archive footage from uh, the library that uh, Wise Words Media has built up over the last couple of years? Let us know uh, because we want to uh, keep it dynamic and interesting uh, for our all of our viewers. Uh, not just for ourselves, we're here to serve you and uh, bring you the best information, the best content, the best footage we can possibly generate, publish and present. So uh, going back to um, uh, the live score, um, uh, Anne Lee has lost her first point of her next service game, but she comes back uh, with a vengeance and wins the next service point thanks to a uh, unforced error on the forehand from Martinez Cires. Uh, so it's 15 all. The next tournament uh, uh, the Spaniard uh, competed in, um, Carlotta Martinez Cires, uh, she was the number two seed in the ITF um, tournament at Putacana in the Dominican Republic. She uh, defeated Jada Daniel of the US 5 7, 6 love, 6 love. Well, <laughs> she motored home. Uh, and uh, next was Fanny Oslin from Sweden, 6-4, uh, 6-7, six, 6-2. Six, the victory going to uh, um, Carlotta martinez Cires, And again, uh, she fell in the quarterfinal to the same Argentinian opponent as the previous tournament. Martina Capuros Taborda um, lost that 4-6, 4-6. 
four, six, the number two seed going down to the number seven seed in uh, that particular match. Uh, so how are we looking? Um, and Lee on serve, 30 all and leading 2-1. And uh, ahead one set to nil in this match. Uh, she now goes up to 40-30. Thanks to a backhand error from uh, Martinez Sirius. Forced into that error. Good play by the American. And uh, the next tournament was again in Putacana, uh, Dominican Republic. Um, this is back in the middle of July. Uh, a couple of months ago. And seeded two in this tournament. Um, she defeated a wild card entry from Ecuador, Camila Romero, uh, 6-4-6-2. Came up again against uh, Fanny Ostland of Sweden, 6-3-6-3 uh, uh, victory there. The Mexican, Ana Sofia Sanchez, in the quarterfinals, won that quarterfinal 6-2-6-4. Six, six, uh, came up against the Bulgarian, uh, Jurgana Topolova. Uh, the number three seed won that 6-2, six, 6-3. Six, and happy days. Uh, the number two seed, Carlotta martinez Cires came up against the number one seed, Ekaterina Makarova, won that 6-3, six, 6-3. Three, six, three. Well done, you. The current score, um, and Lee facing a little bit of pressure on serve. Sends down her second serve at 69 miles per hour. And uh, she has won back advantage after going to Juice and says thank you very much for that uh, forehand forced error uh, to her opponent and now goes to a 3-1 lead in the second set. And just continuing uh, with our um, review of the lead-up tournaments by uh, these two uh, WTA Tour players, We'll continue with Carlotta uh, Martinez uh, Ceres. She's travelled from Central America to Scandinavia to compete in the ITF Tennis Europe tournament in uh, Kogay, Denmark, uh, on on a clay surface. She was the number two seed, and uh, she faced uh, Emily Elday of Norway, um, who was a lucky loser to get a start in this tournament. But uh, she was an unlucky loser against the number two seed, the Spaniard, losing 1-6, 6-3, 6-2. And the next opponent in the round of 16 was uh, from Denmark, um, a qualifier, Emma Malmkjaer, Malmkjaer, uh, uh, Carlotta winning that 6-3, 6 love. But uh, she was stopped in her tracks in the quarterfinal by uh, Anastasia Soboliva, uh, the Ukrainian and number seven seed, winning that 2-6, 3-6. So some really good form um, for uh, uh, Carlotta martinez Cires there in the lead up to the US Open, going from Central America to Scandinavia. But currently in New York, uh, it is um, uh, on the serve, uh, on the racket of the Spaniard. She is down 15-30 and 1-3 in the second set at the moment. So the final tournament, she really gave herself um, every chance to get um, get into uh, some good form here. Now, she was uh, the number three seed in uh, the ITF Tennis Europe uh, tournament in Coxige, Belgium, uh, in the first week of August, and uh, coming up against a qualifier there from the Netherlands, uh, Anouk Kovermans, um, the number three seed lost that match, uh, 4626. And that was her um, lead up. So she got a lot of time on court, um, had some success there, winning the title in uh, Putacana, uh, Dominican Republic. She'll be thrilled with that. And um, unfortunately, although she's, um, they don't give much rankings points, uh, those ITF uh, tournaments around about the $25,000 mark US money. But um, every point is valuable when you're slogging it out in those uh, off the beaten track tournaments. Uh, and uh, she'll be feeling fairly comfortable with her game and uh, fairly well oiled when it comes to uh, backhands and forehands down the line and at the net um, for a clay court uh, specialist. Uh, she's doing well to, um, she knows she's got to um, have a rounded game to succeed at this level. The margins are so fine. So uh, speaking of fine, that is a fine service uh, uh, break by Anne Lee. She has broken the serve of uh, Carlotta Martinez-Cires, um, forcing her into a forehand error. 
and now leading 4-1 in the second set and having taken the first set 7-6 and Lee in front of her home crowd, those uh, those raucous, cheeky Americans, <laughs> with their in-your-face, they'll be um, trying to get her home uh, with their exuberant support out on court 12. So let's take a look at the profile of uh, Anne Lee and uh, see how she's been tracking in the lead up to uh, these qualifiers uh, uh, since Wimbledon, which means we've got to track back to uh, uh, got to track back to uh, early July. She did compete in the qualifiers at Wimbledon, so why not? Let's take a look at those results because there's a couple of familiar names, and surprise, surprise, uh, one of them, <laughs> one of them, one of them is uh, Olivia Gadecki, and having reached the second round of qualifying, uh, Carlotta Martinez Ceres lost to the 27th seed, the Australian Olivia Gadecki was victorious in that match, 3-6, 1-6 over Anne Lee of Pennsylvania, America. But uh, unperturbed, she uh, swung into the US Open hard court, uh, the US hard court season, and she played three tournaments. So let's just double check the live score as uh, on serve, and oh, 110 miles per hour. Off the racket of Anne Lee, if you don't mind, that is that is the fastest serve uh, that I've seen uh, so far in women's qualifying, and uh, <laughs> and Anne Lee is full of beans. Uh, the match has been going an hour and thirty minutes, and she's pulled out a serve of 110 miles per hour for the opening point of the sixth game of the second set on court 12 and just for <laughs> and she's pulled out a serve of 108 miles per hour to win the second point she's pulled out a third serve to win the third point to go to 40 love 106 miles per hour and lee means business that is outrageous she wins that uh, uh point to go to 40 love with a forehand winner her confidence <laughs> He can feel it from here. It is through the roof. So uh, the belief that Anne Lee has has just been confirmed. She goes to a 5-1 lead in the second set. Well done, Anne Lee. She is riding a wave of uh, of support from these um, from these <laughs> very confident New Yorkers who are um, enjoying their uh, hot dog, donut, and takeaway coffee in the sun. As the sun sets at around 8.48 there in New York, it is a balmy 23 degrees. And uh, for a l early late evening, it's pretty sunny, according to the information that I'm looking at. So uh, thanks for joining us today um, for this coverage, this audio radio style, audio only radio style coverage of uh, qualifying. Uh, all four days of uh, qualifying at uh, the US Open. We are alternating. Yesterday it was the men. Today it's the women. Tomorrow it's the men. And Saturday, if we don't sleep in, we'll be back at it with the women. Now, um, uh, Carlotta martinez Ceres, the Spaniard, uh, she's been shocked into action here. She's down 1-5 in the second set. She lost the first set. She has won the first two points of this current service game. And... Uh, she <laughs> My goodness, Anne Lee has hit 32 winners in the second set compared to just nine for uh, Martinez Ceres. So she's got to get on her bike here, the Spaniard, or she's um, if she loses this game, she is out of qualifying and she will be flying out of New York. Um, and she'll uh, if she loses this game, uh, she will um, <laughs> she will she will stop us from uh, having time to review uh, the lead-up form for Anne Lee. Uh, so she's serving well under pressure in this game. Uh, Carlotta is up 40-love in this game. She has to win this service game to stay in the match. I can't see her coming back, to be honest. If I'm, ga if I'm gonna pick a winner, uh, it's gonna be the American. Home court advantage, surface advantage, hard court surface. Um, she's in great form, Anne Lee. But look, to be fair, so is uh, 
And so is uh, her Spanish opponent, having played nearly five tournaments and winning a title in Central America. So serving at 40 love, she's on her second serve, serving at 92 miles per hour. Maybe that's the first serve. And she wins that, uh, does she? Yeah, she wins that game. Well done. Um, uh, an unforced backhand error from Anne Lee. Uh, she's still got a 5-2 lead. So I would expect, um, based on that last service game, Anne Lee sent down a first serve of 110 miles per hour, the second serve at 108 miles per hour, the third serve at 106 miles per hour, followed by a forehand winner. I'm tipping a win by the American uh, to finish off this match, which has been going an hour and 33 minutes. We've been following most of the uh, first set, all of the second set. And uh, can I just tell you that this match, this commentary by uh, this Australian Open Life will be published as a uh, its own um, um, individual piece of content um, over the next couple of days. Um, and uh, if you've um, enjoyed this, and even if you haven't enjoyed it, give us some feedback. Let us know what we can improve for you, the audience, the viewer, the listener, because it's uh, it's the audience that we serve, not ourselves. Um, so as this match uh, could be in the final stages, there's a change of ends, and and Lee will be coming out to serve for the match. And um, as the time ticks down, on the game clock uh, where they'll be uh, coming back out uh, to play um, 102 miles per hour the first serve in this next game the eighth game of the second set and Lee sends that down uh, I don't think she's won the point yet but uh, yeah all of these uh, matches that we cover live um, even the completed match summaries uh, which we'll be going to next uh, upon the completion of this set which at this stage looks like also being the completion of this match. Uh, the second serve at 72 miles per hour here for Anne Lee. Or is it lie? <laughs> potato or potato? Runner or cross trainer? So uh, the second serve there at 72 miles per hour. Um, Anne Lee serving for the match. And I'd say... Uh, Carlotta martinez Sirius is putting up a heck of a fight uh, for this first point. She'll want to break serve here. And at trailing 2-5 in the second set, I'll just refresh the screen. <laughs> it's the best bet because uh, I don't trust it. Still going this, uh, this uh, opening point of this eighth game of the second set. So, Wise Words Media, we punch above our weight, but we do not punch hard enough that we can get broadcast rights. But with your help, if you can shout us a coffee, shout us a ground pass to next year's Australian Open, because it's your contributions that help us improve the content. Um, and I'm not too sure what the delay is here in this match, unless uh, somebody's gone down with an injury or something, which would not be good, especially if it's um, the American who it's fair to say is on fire at the moment. But uh, there is no update to the score, so I can only assume that there is a delay to the match. And we really appreciate you joining us here at uh, This Australian Life for uh, today's coverage of day two of qualifying for ladies and men's singles. Today we're focusing on the ladies. We've um, had a pretty good run today. We've... Uh, We've sat through, uh, this is the third match that we're uh, live commentating on and uh, keeping you up to speed with uh, progress and scores of the various players. This match uh, still is delayed. Uh, so I'd say there's something going on there. Um, but uh, we really appreciate your company and uh, especially the feedback and the encouragement uh, that we get from our audience and the suggestions often lead to uh, ideas that we can uh, produce fresh content that we wouldn't have uh, thought of thought of ourselves. So while there's a delay, let's go back to uh, the story of Anne Lee and uh, her, her journey after Wimbledon. 
which uh, took her from uh, London, uh, from uh, SW19. She travelled back to Texas for the ITF USTA uh, hardcourt tournament. And she went in as the number three seed playing uh, Whitney Osigwe uh, of America. Uh, won that match 4 6 6 1 6 1. Uh, came up against the qualifier, Mary Stoyana, uh, ranked 1,085, and she lost that match 1 6 3 6. And uh, the next tournament was in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, she, her ranking being um, 192. Uh, she lost to the number two seed, Madison Bringle of USA, 1626. And we'll just check to see uh, what's going on here. There, it is three minutes since the last point was played. So there's clearly a delay due to one of the players uh, because I'm just looking at the weather. So there's no rain delay at 8.55 in New York. Um, the sun's gone down and it's still 22 degrees, so great conditions. So it's not the weather causing the delay. It is one of the players. Um, and I can't work out uh, what's going on there because uh, Anne Lee is serving. And she, yep, so play's underway. Someone must have had a toilet break or a, or a trainer's break or something. Second serve, 72 miles per hour from Anne Lee, uh, leading 5-2 in the second set. She is serving for the match. So a bit unusual for somebody to be serving for the match and a delay. So it could have been the Spaniard uh, trying to gather her thoughts and uh, throw in a bit of sneaky strategy there to de delay, throw off the rhythm of the American, collect her thoughts and go for a toilet break, which she's quite entitled to do under the rules. But uh, at the same time, come on, uh, let's keep it all fair and above board. And uh, still no update to the score. I'm going to refresh my screen. And I'm going to refresh your screen while we're at it. Just to keep us all in the mix. And <laughs> the score still has not updated. So let's go back to Anne Lee's profile. And the last tournament she contested before going to New York to contest qualifying for uh, uh, the U.S. singles. Uh, she played in Cincinnati, Ohio at the WTA 1000 tournament in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, and that was last week, um, actually, um, on hard court. She uh, went through qualifying. And uh, the first round of qualifying, she entered as a qualifier and played Lauren Davis. Um the number six seed, the American, and uh, Anne Lee, victorious there, 4-6-6-2-6-1. And still no update to the score. So some lengthy delays here in this uh, match out on court 12. We'll go back to uh, Anne Lee uh, contesting uh, the second qualifying round in Cincinnati, Ohio. She came up against the uh, 12th seed from France, Elise Cornet, a very familiar name. Ranked 66 in the world at the time. And 6-3, um, 6-3, six, three, six, three, and Lee victorious there, which got her through qualifying, which got her into the main draw in Cincinnati. And her first opponent in the round of 64, the unseated Magda Lynette from Poland. She won. Love 6. Love 6, 7-6, six, 6-2. Six. <laughs> six, that is some turnaround. She must have uh, unholstered that... Um, that, that that savage first serve, um, and uh, to get turn that round, you don't see that very often. A turnaround of um, love six, seven six. My goodness, uh, are my eyes deceiving me? No, love six seven six six two, and up in the round of thirty two, the number two seed, Arena Sabalenka, uh, the ranked two in the world as well. Uh, and Lee losing that ma that match in three sets, a very respectable uh, loss, which wouldn't it, won't please her at all. She want to win five seven six two four six, um, so unable to get over uh, her more experienced, higher ranked opponent. So I am not sure what's going on here uh, with this match between uh, Anne Lee of Pennsylvania and. Uh, I can't imagine they're stopping for light unless there are no lights on this court, no? 
it says the the scoreboard says the match is live and and Lee is serving at 72 miles per hour so just waiting for the update here we'll refresh the screen because we can and this point is seemingly underway and Lee serving for the match at 5-2 in the second set she won the first set 7-6 seven, 7 points to 1 and I am completely in the dark <laughs> this is the first time I've come across this uh, situation with uh, the live score so look um, what we might do is we will leave this match um, for the time being and we're going to take a slightly longer extended break for about three to four minutes and when we come back we will wrap up uh, today's broadcast coverage um, at this Australian Open Life we will uh, fill you in on all the final results from the last uh, nine to ten games and possibly hopefully even this one uh, don't go away we'll be right back
international student, could you please put your hand up? stories and our story is tennis and the story of the day is day two qualifying men's and ladies singles today we're concentrating on the WTA tour the uh, ladies singles at Flushing Meadow in New York and no change no update to the match that we were following breathlessly <laughs> breathlessly breathlessly uh, with Ann Lee, the American, leading 5-2 in the second set. And that match has come to a standstill. Uh, not quite sure why. Um, because uh, maybe maybe uh, all matches have um, uh, come to a conclusion. Uh, maybe they are not playing under lights. And it is underway, that match. It is underway again after a very long delay of almost 10 to 15 minutes. So we'll, um, we'll follow it through because uh, Anne Lee uh, is serving and uh, we'll just get this on the full screen for you. So <laughs> you've got to keep your wits about you with, the, <laughs> with, this, with, this, uh, with this unfolding um, uh, play here. So Anne Lee serving for the match. Um, she uh, commits a, um, an unforced error on the forehand uh, uh, Carlotta Martinez Ceres um, now draws level at 15 all in this game. Should be fighting to stay in this match, but I'm tipping that uh, Anne Lee will be uh, victorious here. And uh, oh boy, that caught me by surprise. So Anne Lee uh, serving at 66 miles per hour, which is half the speed of one of her serves in her previous service game she served at 110 uh, miles per hour and she's lost that point 15:30 she trails um, so I'll, the only the only thing I can uh, think of is that maybe it was Anne Lee uh, having a no she's serving at 96 miles per hour there. Uh, the online stat. If you want to fo uh, follow the slam tracker for this match, uh, I've put the link in the in the uh, the chat there that you can see for yourself the stats, uh, which don't really give away much in terms of uh, commentary um, as to why there was a delay. But just looking at um, the speed of service here for and Lee in this current game that uh, serving at 64 miles per hour in her last serve, that is well below uh, the, uh, well below. So yeah, I'm just trying to work out, I'm just trying to um, basically think up evidence as to why she's serving low. So that is um, now 40-30, serving for the match and Lee, uh, leading 5-2 in the second set. And uh, it looks like a victory for the, um, for the homegrown talent in front of a New York crowd. She's serving at 86 miles per hour. Perhaps uh, she had an injury. Perhaps she had an issue. But we'll never know <laughs> because we, uh, we don't have um, uh, broadcast rights here. And we don't have any um, backdoor access to any uh, streaming by ESPN who are covering this extensively, this US Open. Because uh, I did try to have a look at uh, the streaming for this qualifying, but uh, couldn't get through the geo lock on uh, this particular website or the ESPN website. Maybe you can if you're not located in Australia. So Anne Lee serving for the match and loses that point. Thanks to a solid backhand winner 
from her Spanish opponent, Carlotta Martinez Ceres. So, um, if uh, we're going to wrap up coverage um, pretty soon, um, anyway, for today, uh, regardless of whether Anne Lee wins this match, as she goes to advantage on that last serve, she digs out a serve at 103 miles per hour. I'm starting to think that maybe she had an injury uh, or, a, or a timeout. The delay was um, uh, possibly around her uh, match fitness, but she has sent down a second serve at 102 miles per hour, uh, looking for, yes, and she's got it. Well done to Anne Lee winning the second set with a forehand volley. A winner down the line <laughs> behind Martinez. I can picture it in my head, a forehand volley winner. Well done, Anne Lee. And well played to Carlotta martinez Ceres. Very well done to you, uh, putting, up a, uh, putting in a great display. But she'll be disappointed um, having won a title in uh, Central America, in the Dominican Republic recently, and Anne Lee will be thrilled with that. Um, she's an experienced, uh, very experienced player in qualifying, and she'll be wanting to put all of that experience uh, that she's built up through uh, what's most likely um, a lot of frustrating losses in qualifiers over, uh, um, she, uh, for example, she lost to Australia's Olivia Gadecki in second round qualifying at Wimbledon this year. So well done, Anne Lee. Great place to um, uh, win so convincingly and uh, with great character. A great match, actually, between those two ladies. Um, Anne Lee of uh, Pennsylvania in America winning 7-6, 6-2. She won the uh, first set tiebreaker, 7 points to 1. And thank goodness that uh, that match is finished. <laughs> That's great timing because it's time for us to wrap up coverage here of day two uh, qualifying. And uh, But we can't do that before we do this. And uh, what that means is that uh, we're going to um, uh, just take a macro view of day two. And uh, we're going to look through um, the results for the completed matches, uh, there's about um, uh, there's about uh, nine or ten completed matches for us to get through. So let's take a look at those. And on the screen, uh, we will bring up um, actually just to keep it interesting for those of you uh, watching along at home, we'll uh, give you uh, the URL uh, here. There is still one match live in New York at the moment, and it's featuring an Australian, Arena Rodianova. So let's um, get that up on screen for you, um, because it'll be much more fun to watch a, uh, a live match while we go through these completed match scores. So uh, Arena Rodianova, uh, that's... Um, uh, that's, hang on a second. <laughs> That's the wrong one. One second. Just let us let us sort ourselves out here that uh, we can bring up this match between Arena Rodianova, who is playing another Spanish player, uh, Bastiol Ribera, and a couple of very experienced players here. So let me just uh, tweak this just ever so slightly for you. And that will come up now. That score, there it is. Arena Rodianova leading 7-5 uh, uh, in the first set, 4-2 in the second set, and currently down uh, Love 30 in the seventh game of the second set. So uh, it's all set up there for the Australian uh, Rodianova to uh, win that match and go through to the second round uh, of qualifying singles for the women. But uh, while you, the audience, enjoy, <laughs> enjoy that live score of this final match uh, to be played, and uh, that'll be played out to um, its conclusion. Let's go through the completed matches for day two for the women's qualifying singles. So there's about there's about two matches, uh, ten matches for us to uh, go through. And uh, wouldn't you know it, they've um, they've they switched these round on me. I bet they have. <laughs> no. There's about, anyway, there's about 10 matches, uh, seven matches, eight matches for us to go through. So let's go through these. 
um, basically. Um, play started off very, very early this morning, uh, Melbourne time, um, about one o'clock this morning, Melbourne time, and uh, about uh, 10 to 12 hours of play there in New York. Um, and uh, currently it's about 9.15 in the evening there. So look, let's, um, let's take a short break. And uh, when we come back, it'll be these final completed matches. You're listening to The Bloke Who Walks. Uh, this Australian Open life produced by Wise Words Media. For the last 3 hours and 45 minutes, we've been bringing you day two coverage of the women's qualifying singles round one at Flushing Meadows, New York. Okay, welcome back to our final segment for the morning, local Australian time. And uh, we're going to finish off um, here with, um, well, on screen we've got the live match um, out on court 10 between Rodianova and uh, Vasoy Ribera. Um, but let's go to um, the, final, um, the final six or seven or eight completed match results. Uh, for the uh, round one of women's qualifying singles in New York. So out on court 13, uh, the German Niemeyer, uh, the number four seed, lost to the Greek player, Papa Mikhail, 6-3, um, 6-4. Uh, we had a Japanese winner out on court 14 um, up against uh, the Chinese player, uh, the 28th seed, the unseeded uh, Japanese player, Hong Tama, uh, what a cracker of a match. Uh, even though it was only two sets, she won in straight sets. Uh, oh, that's only one tie break. That's my undiagnosed dyslexia playing up again. Uh, the Japanese player winning in 2 hours and 17 minutes, 7-5, seven, 7-6, seven, and winning 8-6 in the tie break in the second set. And uh, following up immediately after was another Japanese victory. It was Ujima. Uchijima uh, over um, uh, Fruvitova, the 21st seed going down, in, uh, seeded 21st in qualifying, that is. Uh, a fairly straightforward victory for the Japanese player. She won 6-1, 6-2 in an hour and 15 minutes. Nice work there. Uh, out on court 13 uh, uh, in three sets over an hour and 31 minutes uh, was Hartano. Uh, beating Karatancheva, uh, Kara, 6-1, 3-6, 6-1. A fairly up and down match there for both players. Uh, court 15, the, uh, the match that followed on, was uh, the German, the fifth seed, Minen, uh, winning in three sets, 6-1, 2-6, 6-3, -6 against uh, the Turkish player, Son Mez. And the first match that we covered live today, we followed the first set on court 16. Uh, that This match unfortunately only went an hour and eight minutes. And I say unfortunately because in straight sets, Vera Zvoraneva, 6-3, 6 love, the winner over Jamie Fawless. That's a really, really disappointing second set for Jamie Fawless. She's a lot better than that, and she's had a lot of experience in qualifying, especially at Grand Slam. So hopefully um, she doesn't get too down in the dumps about it and can, can come back with a stronger performance in January 2024 at the Australian Open. And the final completed uh, women's... Uh, the second, the penultimate... Uh, women's qualifying singles match was the Korean Jang 
uh, victorious 6176 uh, seven points to five in the second set tiebreaker she beat Havlik over uh, there in a fairly straightforward fashion of uh, one hour and 31 minutes and of course if you've just joined us where have you been <laughs> Where have you been? Because we've just enjoyed a great match uh, between uh, between uh, Anne Lee, the local American. And uh, I'm going to refresh this screen because I want to read out this uh, final completed result uh, for the day. Uh, there at Flushing Meadows, uh, the women's qualifying. And it hasn't come up on screen yet. So that's a little bit annoying. Uh, let's see, let's see, I'll just uh, click this link here, uh, which should work, uh, because I put up this uh, slam tracker of this match in the chat for those of you playing along at home who like to uh, keep us honest, and it was the final completed match today. For some reason, there was an extensive, extended <laughs> unknown delay before Anne Lee picked up her racket and served for the match at 5-2 and she got the job done. She only lost three points in the final service game. 7-6 uh, in the first set, seven points to one. Um, that, um, uh, where is that music? Um, she, um, uh, <laughs> I've interrupted myself, should never do that. She won 7-6. 6-2 in straight sets there. It was a tougher match for her than what the score suggests because in during that hour and 53 minutes, uh, her Spanish opponent, Carlota Martinez Ceres, was well in contention. And uh, she probably um, lost a bit of momentum um, at the end of the first set when she uh, she was down uh, six, points, um, six points to love in the first set tiebreaker. And she never really regained um, equilibrium in her game. And um, in all fairness, she put up a good effort. But um, for the American playing in front of her home crowd, no doubt that raucous, boisterous, in-your-face New York American Grand Slam crowd got right behind their homegrown talent and helped her home. Um, they were the wind beneath her wings. <laughs> and so that's it. Uh, with uh, Arena Rodianova uh, in the second set there. Uh, we will leave Arena Rodianova um, there. And uh, let's do this. And that signifies our last little uh, break, our last segment. So... Uh, tell us what you think. Um, we've been going three hours and 50 minutes with this coverage today. And you can count on us um, publishing separate uh, items of uh, content extracted from today's broadcast as uh, individual unique episodes. The commentary for these um, live matches uh, will go up uh, for you to enjoy. And we're also coming back tomorrow uh, where we'll be covering the men uh, the men's uh, uh, singles qualifying tomorrow, day three, and likely to be uh, round two for the chaps, and uh, providing we don't sleep in um, uh, Saturday, uh, we will uh, be back with day four coverage for the women, uh, which was probably will probably be uh, round three qualifying um, in New York. Um, so... Uh, let us know what you think. Um, let us know what your thoughts are about um, the US Open. We will also be covering the first two days of um, US Open tournament play because the tears, the tantrums, the upsets, the victories, the comebacks, the rising stars, those are where the juiciest stories are in the first um, uh, couple of days of uh, any Grand Slam tournament. So that's about it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. You've been with uh, Keeping Company with um, I'm the Bloke Who Walks of this Australian Open Life produced by Wise Words Media. We're based in Melbourne, Australia. We cover uh, the Australian Open, but this year we've branched out to make our uh, content more dynamic, more interactive, and hopefully far more interesting with uh, uh, broadcast coverage of... Uh, uh, the uh, all Grand Slams this year 
radio style, audio only um, uh, uh, coverage with um, footage from our archives uh, harvested and um, and built up over the last couple of years uh, covering uh, the Australian Open with uh, Melbourne as the star of the show um, and we hope you agree. So if you've got any feedback, please dump it in the comments, dump it in the, uh, in the chat box and uh, if there's any players you'd like us to showcase or follow or review or find out more information about let us do the hard work for you, and um, and uh, we're here to serve our audience all over the world. So um, that's about it for now. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching, and we will chat to you very soon, more than likely about uh, 7:30 in the morning local time, Melbourne, Australia. Bye for now.